Tonight is a special night at Scout Field. As members of the first Scott Scout football team to make the WBSSAC playoffs back in 1972 will be honored. Many memories will be shared as many of these guys have not seen each other in 51 years. The Scouts lost the playoff game to Magnolia High 26-18 and tonight we will honor these gentlemen and their fallen team members who have passed on since that day in 1972. But today is a new dawn as the Scott Scouts remain undefeated and 3-0 and ranked number two in many of the power rankings across the state of West Virginia. A powerful program in the form of the Point Pleasant Big Blacks have made their way to Madison to challenge and to try to upset the Scouts' perfect record. It's time to crank up the microphones and bring you another exciting game of black and gold football. From Skyhawk Field, it's your second rank, Scott Skyhawks, hosting the one and one Big Blacks from Point Pleasant High School. Sit back and enjoy our coverage on WZAC, Video Productions, and the Skyhawk Sports Network. It's time for the Parmar Stores broadcast of Scott Skyhawk Football on WZAC and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Skyhawk Football is presented to you by Miller Brothers Pharmacy, your locally owned and operated full-service pharmacy. Parmar Stores. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. Stevens Auto Center. Come to Stevens for all the right reasons. Caldwell Insurance Agency. Let her family serve your family. The Handley Funeral Home, serving the region for over 55 years. People's Bank, working together, building success. Member FDIC. Barker's Hardware, shop where the local contractors shop. Boone Memorial Health, bringing medicine home. Schaefer and Schaefer, attorneys at law, serving West Virginia now for over 100 years. Thornhill Auto Group, nobody beats a Thornhill deal, and we mean nobody. Farrell and Hill Insurance Agency, insuring our local community for over 70 years. Clayton Homes, opening doors to a better life, one home at a time. And by your locally owned and operated McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. For the Primar Stores pregame show, let's go to the stadium. Here's Joe Limble and Chris Barrett. Thank you very much and welcome to Scout Field where tonight uh, they're getting ready to honor the first uh, Scott football team that went to the West Virginia AA playoffs all the way back in 1972. And Chris Barrett, I hate to admit this, but I was at the game. <laughs> so anyway, the players are walking uh, up uh, the uh, near side hash mark. Uh, I'm going to see how many of these guys I can remember. Let's see, number 72, Shaky Perry, Mark Perry. Uh, number 82, James Bryant. Uh, number 11, Billy Knight. Number 80, uh, Mike. Uh, dun, 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 Mike Lucas, I had to look. Uh, number 63, Jerry Bice. 33, Frank Pearson. 71, Ray Barker. 42 is Artie Barker. 73 is Donnie Weaver. Number 30 is Chet Burgess. Number 43 is Tim Leary. And number 12 is uh, Dana. Oh, my gosh. Uh, number 12, Dana Bell. I don't know why I can't, I can't remember the last names. Uh, Woody uh, Dolan's out there. The next to last guy, I'm not sure. And then David, uh, David Green is wearing number 85. So they're now being introduced to players. That goes way back when only eight teams made it to the playoffs. These guys went to Ripley and played Magnolia High School, unfortunately, came up a little bit short on the score. They dominated the stats, but just could not dominate the scoreboard. Yeah, and, you know, Jay, I think, I think the greatest part about this night is, is not their accomplishment, but you look, you look down there and there's so many guys in that row that have such a huge uh, hand in what Madison and Danville has been in the last couple couple years. You know, Chet Burgess is the uh, – uh, Chief of Police in Madison Police Department. Frank Pearson's had a lot to do with a lot of things around here, especially when it comes to Skyhawk Sky athletics and what he gives. I know he gives generously to the baseball program every year. Jerry Bias has been, been a big part of the community. He's with the health department now. Uh, you know, Shakey's always on those sidelines every Friday doing the, doing the chains. And, and you know, there, there's, you know, Artie Barker's been a big, big part.
you know, just so many of them has made uh, a great deal of uh, impact on the community, not just whenever they're playing days, but now I hear after. And a lot of these guys, like you said, stay connected, but a lot of these guys that live out of town, I know Donnie Weaver, I get messages from him all the time, he and his family and several of the others listen to our broadcast on Friday nights. They enjoy still following Skyhawk football after all these years. They had a nice little get-together uh, in Charleston last night, had a dinner. Uh, fortunately, I was invited and a couple of coaches uh, from the Scott football team went over and it was a nice deal and as you can see they've all got their uh, jerseys on black jerseys gold numbers uh, similar to the ones they wore uh, back in the day I want to try to grab a quick picture here if I can uh, while they are out on the field but uh, Anyway, uh, it's just great to see all these guys and get to catch up with them and, uh, and reminisce with them. So uh, we'll be talking a little bit more about this team as we go through on uh, throughout the evening. They went 9-0 uh, and on the season, ranked, I believe, number one in the state. The Man Hillbillies came to town and just had lunch with them. Uh, knocked them off by a score. I've got it right here. Uh, 44 to 14, and that was at Old Scott Field was, down on Lake Creek. Was back when man had about, you know, <laughs> I think they were residents. Triple, yeah, that is true. But this ball team in 1970 were four and six. 71, they went three, four, and had three ties. Then they went nine and two in 72. Then the following year went five and five and uh, four and six. So that's kind of how, you know, football back then isn't any different than it is today. No, no, it was a lot more smash mouth. You know, the, <laughs> you, you very rarely seen the ball go in the air back in those days. It was primarily run, and it was a lot. The road for the first time played at Sissonville. Scott uh, was 2-0. and Sissonville was 0-2. to get their feet on the ground, but once they did, they started cranking up the points. Yeah, to be honest with you, Scott, Scott has to be pleased with uh, who they were playing, to be honest with you. Sissonville is down, and, and it was an opportunity for if Scott was playing anybody with, with any type of talent, and it's not a, a, a shame on Sissonville, but they would have been in a hole pretty early. Yeah. You know, Sissonville, even Sissonville, with the down talent that they, they had, was moving the football early and just shot themselves in the foot. Um, but th this is this is a team that can't afford to have those opportunities because this is a, a, an offense that should be able to carry a team and a defense that should be able to keep any team in a ball game. So I, I think Scott realized that. Matt uh, Fry came out through uh, three touchdowns in a row. Then Carson Brenniger ran a 56 yarder. Then he threw one to Preston Cooper, the running back. So Scott led 33 to nothing at the half. Then Matt Fry found Isaiah Bush in the end zone, and uh, then uh, Bray. Aiden Clark had a pick six on him, and then uh, Preston Cooper ran another touchdown. Scott had him 53 to nothing, and then they uh, kind of give uh, second team uh, opportunity to come out and play. They scored two touchdowns after that, but Scott should have shut them out. Yeah, and all you know, what 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 ends up happening, and this is going to be one of my my keys to the game is going to be Scott can't afford to start slow tonight. Yeah, because you're going they, to I, you have a team coming to town that their main goal is to run the football. Their main goal is to cut possessions in half, take lengthen out drives to make sure that you don't have eight, nine drives to score six or seven touchdowns. So tonight you is a night especially where Scott has to make every drive count if they want to come out on top. I think Scott knows that. I think two weeks ago they were a little flat against Wayne. It was a long day. They had the Friday night or the Friday morning TV show. They had a pep rally basically at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. Those guys were tired. Last week I think they come in a little calm confident knowing they pretty well had system built hand but you're right they've had a very good uh, week of practice these guys know they got to be on target tonight because point pleasant is a kind of team that will sneak in and knock uh, knock that win out from under you yeah and the one game that they've lost was to a Gallia, a, a Gallia County yeah. which is the equivalent of us going and playing Cabell Midland yeah so that that's the kind of the team that that, that not off point pleasant and from my understanding from watching film Point Pleasant put up a fight for most of that game, and then Gallia kind of just broke away from it late. But but this is a team that wants to come in. They want to establish their way of playing football, and that's exactly what they did for most of the game last year. Scott was able to come up with a couple key stops, but you've seen what kind of team they were last year when they were missing three of their best players right. and still get come down to a touchdown game. Yep, exactly. Uh, Greenbrier East uh, traveled to uh, Point Pleasant. 
uh, the first game of the season. Uh, Point won that one 26-7, and they lost to Gallia Academy last week 42-12. Well, actually two weeks ago had an open week. This is their first away game, so hopefully that will uh, benefit the Skyhawks tonight. Yes, yes. And I, like I said, the Scots' main focus is, is do not come out flat because this is a team that will sustain drives. They will lengthen it out, and they will make you pay for a slow start. And, of course, Skyhawks 3-0 uh, and coming into the night. Uh, the big win over Hoover in game one, 50-19. Uh, beat Sis or her, uh, Wayne 26-16. Uh, uh, that was kind of a nail-biter pretty much into the fourth quarter. And then, uh, like we was talking about, 59-14 on the road last week at Sissonville. We'll go ahead and take uh, step aside, take our first two-minute break. We come back. Uh, the head coach, uh, Coach Dolan, has been out of town this week, so we got a surprise interview, uh, a couple of coaches for our pregame interview tonight. You're listening to the Scott Skyhawks on WZAC Video Productions and the Scott Hawk Sports Network. Hill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. U.S. 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.handleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. The Southern Pineapple in downtown Madison is your choice for women's clothing and accessories. They have styles that fit all ages, along with local handmade jewelry. From elegant to everyday wear, the Southern Pineapple is your place to shop. Find us on Facebook, subscribe to our page, so you can see all the latest products and inventory. Come and shop at our unique boutique and be sweet. At Miller Brothers Pharmacy, we are dedicated to providing outstanding personalized customer service at an affordable price. We are your one-stop shop for all your pharmacy and medical needs. Our staff has over 90 years of experience, so you can count on fast, personal attention. Our pharmacy is proud to offer delivery service for your convenience with free delivery for patients within Madison and Danville city limits. Contact a member of our team about delivery today. Pre-game show joining us tonight is a couple of the assistant coaches on the Scott High program. We've got Eric uh, McClung, the defensive coordinator, and also Dean Brendiger, the associate head coach. And first of all, Dean, let's go with you. Let's go back uh, quickly and look at last week's game at Sissonville. It was the first uh, road game of the season for the Skyhawks. Uh, I felt like the offense come out a little flat, but once they got things going there in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, Matt Fry really came alive uh, with the ball and putting the ball into the end zone. They did. Um, a lot of it, I think, is from the practices we had last week. We had a lot of illness. Um, we didn't really practice um, to our potential last week. That's, uh, I credit that to the slow start. This week, I feel so far, we've had great physical practices, and the boys are really tuned in and uh, focused on their positions. Before we talk about tonight's game, Coach McClung, uh, let's talk a little bit about your defense there last week. Uh, you know, they seemed like uh, they pretty much uh, had a game plan right from the beginning and pretty much stuck to it. We did. We we put in a new defense. We went with the 3-3-5 defense against Sissonville. They were going to throw the ball a lot. Uh, they were about an 80-20, 85-15% run team. So we put in a uh, package just for Sissonville. Um, and they executed it well. We played the fifth D back and took a man out of the box to uh, to 
protect against the pass, and it seemed to work real well for us. Let's go ahead and switch gears, talk about Point Pleasant coming into town. Of course, they're always a you know, good, solid program. What have you done to prepare for them tonight? Uh, we've gotten ready for them. To, they're, they're a power run team, a lot like Wayne we faced two weeks ago. Uh, they're, they're, gonna, they're big up front, they're physical up front, and we've got to match the physicality on the defensive side of the ball, and I think we'll be fine. You making any changes in your starting lineup or going pretty much what you had with we're, last week? We're going pretty much the same thing. Uh, we're, we're going to add uh, one more D lineman. Uh, down in the box to to compensate for their their size. They they've got one tackle, and I'll give the boy credit. He's a big boy. He's physical. Uh, we faced him last year. He's a sophomore then. He's a junior now. Uh, they've got a big tight end. So on film, they're running behind him. We we know what they're going to do. We just have to stop it. Coach Brenniger, let's go back uh, offensively. Uh, what's the uh, scout? What kind of package are we putting together for tonight? And how are they looking so far? Well, main the main thing is. We just need to get better at what we are good at. And something that we were really worked hard this week on is with the receivers. Uh, when the, our quarterback's scrambling um, and is flushed out of the pocket, uh, our receivers has got to do a better job at helping the quarterback, uh, working back to the ball, getting into space, and, and finding those holes in those zone, zone packages. I know, uh, like I said, you know, Matt Fry, your, your quarterback, uh, pretty much uh, putting the, the, some big numbers up again this year, and uh, we've got some talented receivers out there catching those balls. Yes, uh, I mean, of course I'm biased to it, but uh, I think Matt Fry is the best quarterback in the state of West Virginia. Uh, I would not want uh, any other quarterback to be uh, leading our group right now. He's not only a great quarterback, but he's a great leader, uh, and our receiving core is in my opinion, one of the fastest groups uh, in the state, especially in double A. Uh, they proved it uh, last spring in track. Uh, we had a state champion and four runner-ups. Uh, like I said, yeah, our, our receiving core and quarterback is top-notch in my opinion. Uh, Coach McClung, let's quickly jump back over to the defense. Uh, you've got uh, Tom Mitchell's been putting in some good efforts, uh, David Fantasy, uh, even your up front line there. Let's talk about them a little bit and give them a little credit. They they have. They, they're they playing hard. They're playing real physical. Uh, I've told them this week that they've really got to step it up oh, physically this week uh, from what we have played. I thought we've played – we played real good against Hoover, physical football, controlled the, the defensive line. Um, not so much in the Wayne game, although I was very proud of them. We, we, we bent, but we, didn't ever, we never broke. Uh, we had a bunch of fourth down stops and, and key moments in that game. Uh, if we can do that against, against Point Pleasant, we'll be, we'll be just fine. Coach, final question. Coach Brenniger, um, you guys have scouted Point Pleasant. How do we match up with them? I think we match up well with them. Uh, like I said, Coach McClung said, they're probably going to be the most physical team we face this year. Um, the good news is we're 3-0, and sitting at 3-0. and And what's even better is I think all the coaches will agree we haven't played our best football yet. So all we can do is just not only every day but every week is just keep getting better and better. And uh, this week is Point Pleasant. Coach, thank you very much. Coach uh, Dean Brenniker, the associate head coach, and Eric McClung, defensive coordinator for the Scott Scouts. We'll be back with more of our Parmar Stores pregame show after this. You're listening to Black and Gold Football on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. With Erie Insurance here at Caldwell Insurance Agency, I want to provide you with the best customer service available. I want to provide you with coverages that nobody else can provide you with, along with affordable rates. I promise you when you come in this office, we will take better care of you than anybody else. Provide you with the best auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, and life insurance. I want our family to be able to take care of your family, and I promise you we will be able to do that here at Caldwell Insurance Agency. Make the short drive to Danville and come see us where the Make the Summer Sales event is in full swing at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. We've got savings on all models, including up to $14,000 below MSRP on the 2023 Ram Limiteds and 15% off MSRP on the 2023 Jeep Compasses. And the new 2024 Wranglers are awesome and arriving daily. So come see us for the Make the Summer Sales event at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Route 119 in Danville. 
The Tint Guy has big news. The newest location is now open in Barbersville. Voted best in the Valley since 2020. Getting your windows tinted is now twice as easy. Go to the best, The Tint Guy. Hey, Tint Guy here. Come see us at our new location in Barbersville. Relationships in life are more important than the one between you and your Michelin tires. Rugged, long-lasting Michelin truck tires. Michelin, a better way forward. As the field is empty, both teams uh, in the locker room. I see the Scott Band coming around the way. And Chris, let's quickly jump back and take a look at some stats uh, from a week ago in that game at Sissonville. Like I said, Scott, a uh, little flat coming out. But then they had uh, 517 yards compared to 161 for Sissonville. That made a big difference uh, in the Skyhawks' uh, win at the end. Yeah, and and it's really, really well compared to what uh, it could have been, especially with all the penalties that Scott shot themselves in the foot with early and then just how they, they were kind of stagnant there going in the first quarter. But you also have to remember that Sisseville had opportunities to, to kind of probably closer to that 300-yard mark if, if their quarterback's able to make a couple more throws, you know, had some breakdown in the secondary. Uh, but uh, overall, you know, you had Scott with 37 plays, 517 yards total offense. Matt Fry, 18 of 29, 291 yards, five touchdowns, did have the one interception. Uh, Preston Cooper had another really nice game, nine yard, or nine carries for 104 yards, so averaging almost 11 yards per carry. Uh, one touchdown. Uh, Brenniger had the one carry for 56 yards, a touchdown. Uh, in the receiving, Isaiah Bush, you know, everybody kind of, sets their sights on Brenniger and, and Braden Clark in the passing game. But so far this year, it's been Isaiah Bush that's been the, the uh, I guess you could say, the, the guy that has feasted off of the, the extra coverage that Clark and, and Brenniger's gotten. He had five catches for 135 yards and three touchdowns in that game. You know, you take a look at Matt Fry. On the season, he's 43 of 64, 802 yards. He's thrown 10 touchdowns and only two interceptions. So that's been a big key to keeping this Scott offense on track. It, it really has, and, and, and you, that's what Matt needs to be. We know how great he is uh, with his arm, with his legs, and everything like that. But he also needs to be a game manager, and that means not turning the football over because, you know, especially when we get into this Cardinal Conference grind that you're going to get into with, with the with the Nitros and the, the Winfields, there's going to be games to where you're not going to be able to move the football like you've been the, the, at the first part of this season. So, you know, when you turn the ball over like, like that, um, it has a chance to bite you. But, but him taking care of the football and Scott taking care of the football all together, there's not really been many turnovers at all, including fumbles. So that's been a big key to even when Scott starts so like they did last week, they're able to finally get going. They're not in a hole. Now let's talk a little bit about the rankings. Uh, Scott's been uh, number two the last couple of weeks. Uh, they're number two in the uh, WVSSA, or the, I'm sorry, the Metro News Power Rankings. We are actually tied for number six in the WVSSAC point uh, standings, but that will change as the season goes on. I mean, we really didn't get anything out of Sissonville. Uh, got a few points out of, uh, you know, Hoover with their win got, last yeah, week, and that's one, about it. Wayne, you got zero points for Wayne because right. they're one wins against Tulsa, so it's hard to get that. But as you said, Joe, there, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to get that. What Winfield, you look for them to probably be undefeated when they roll into town. Uh, I, I'm still not convinced that Nitro is the team that everybody thinks Nitro is. Um, it, it's kind of hard for me to say that you're a good team when you go put up 86 points on a on a team that has 22 players on the, on the field on the opposite side. Um, but I, I think they're going to be much improved. 
you know, there's going to be opportunities for you to gain points. Um, you just have to stay your course. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and tonight could be one of those nights. Hopefully uh, Scott can uh, play the game and come out and uh, compete with Point Pleasant. You know, we won't know what we what we have until we see him on the field matched up head to head. The, th the thing that, that hurts you with Point Pleasant is they play six games in state and four games out of state. So you don't really get anything for those out of state games. You right. get like I think it's like a quarter of the points that you would get. So a team like Point Pleasant that could end up going nine and one, eight and two on the season, if three of those wins are against out of state teams, that's three three half or a quarter of a points that you're going to get. So that kind of hurts. But at the same time, this is a measuring stick for the type of teams you're going to see when it comes to playoff time for high school football, especially in Class Double A. And I've seen Bluefield do the same thing. You know, they'll play some out of state teams. You know, they'll come in there six and four, five and five, sneak in the playoffs and make a pretty good and run. And that's at the it. thing. You ask Point Pleasant right now. I guarantee you, you can look at it and say, "Well, Gallia, Gallia Academy is going to be better than probably anybody on our schedule." Uh, Warren Local is probably going to be better than three quarters of the people that we could schedule in West Virginia. Marietta is going to be another team that's probably going to come in and be like, ah, they're going to be better than three quarters of the team in West Virginia. Fort Fry is a powerhouse in the state of Ohio. So, I mean, it's one of those things to where they're probably looking at it like, I don't care what gets me in as long as I get in because those four teams are going to make me better playing them uh, the four times this year than what any team I can play in probably West Virginia is going to make me. All right, looks like we're probably getting ready for the National Anthem. We'll go ahead and take a two-minute break, and we'll be back with more of our Parmar Stores pregame show here on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Hey. Jake from State Farm. We have to know. Yeah, these are State Farm pajamas. No, what if we have to talk to somebody about our policy, but it's late at night? Call us 24-7. Great. Because what if someone still calls his mom for everything? We'll walk you through everything. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Oh, yeah, mom, everything's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, not my mom. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. At Miller Brothers Pharmacy, we are dedicated to providing outstanding personalized customer service at an affordable price. We are your one-stop shop for all your pharmacy and medical needs. Our staff has over 90 years of experience, so you can count on fast, personal attention. Our pharmacy is proud to offer delivery service for your convenience with free delivery for patients within Madison and Danville city limits. Contact a member of our team about delivery today. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.hanleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. Over 70 years. Clayton Homes, opening doors to a better life, one home at a time. And by your locally owned and operated McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And now to bring you all the action of black and gold football, here's the voice of the Scott Skyhawks, Joe Linville. Thank you very much. And the Point Pleasant Big Blacks have just made their way down to their side of the field. The Skyhawks uh, still in the locker room getting ready to make their uh, charge out of the Big Skyhawk. And here they come. Here comes the Skyhawks down the uh, in front of the home stands. Fairly decent crowd on hand. A little slow people getting in tonight. Just want to give another quick shout out. Uh, joining the team tonight is uh, Alan Meadows, who was uh, the first 
I think one of the first freshman football players in the NCAA when he went to Marshall after the plane crash. We did an interview with him, uh, a multi-session interview uh, last year, and or maybe two years ago. I don't know. Time flies. But anyway, he is here tonight. And also... uh, uh, Lee Javens, who played uh, for Scott and went on to play football at uh, WVU, uh, is in the stands tonight honoring the uh, 1972 team. And the captains for both squads are making their way out to the field for Scott will be Matt Fry, uh, number 56 for the Scouts, Chase Dials, number 50, Braden uh, Queen, and number 22, Preston Cooper. So the key is, so if we win the toss tonight, do you think we'll defer or take the kick? Uh, I, this game, I would defer. <laughs> exactly. To see what your defense uh, can do. Uh, then there's <clears throat> four players out there. You, I can't see their numbers. Point Pleasant wearing all white tonight. Uh, white helmet with the uh, red pink or the red uh, P on the side of it on one side and their numeral uh, jersey number on the other side and Skyhawks wearing black and gold Scott wearing black tops gold pants and their traditional black uh, helmets. Scott will actually receive the opening kickoff. Now they go out and shake hands and as soon as the band plays the national anthem don't ask me why it's time to kick the ball off and we still haven't had the national anthem by the band. We'll go ahead and take a quick one minute break and we'll come back and have the opening kickoff for tonight's game. You're listening to Scott Skyhawk Football on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Located short drive to Danville and come see us where the Make the Summer Sales event is in full swing at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. We've got savings on all models, including up to $14,000 below MSRP on the 2023 Ram Limiteds and 15% off MSRP on the 2023 Jeep Compasses. And the new 2024 Wranglers are awesome and arriving daily. So come see us for the Make the Summer Sales event at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Route 119 in Danville. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.handleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. Anthem uh, conclusion by the Scott High School Marching Band. Now let's take a look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. Chris? First off for the Point Pleasant offense will be from left to right. Left tackle will be number be Connor Buckle. The left guard will be Dylan Kiefer. Number 50, Caleb Jones will play center. Number 54, Cole Miller will play right guard. And right tackle will be number 74, Colton Weaver. At the outside receiver positions will be number 27, Reese Collins. Hayden Hunt and the two tight ends will be number 34 Josh Chapman and Connor Hayton in the backfield will be Ethan Brent number 11 Andrew Shoon and in the slot will be Anthony Marrero and their quarterback or their tailback at number one Brody Bowen their quarterback will be number eight a 6'1 180 pound sophomore Caden Hill I'm sorry it, I'm sorry they got two listed here it is uh, six foot 175 pound senior Jason Hughes I'm going to go ahead and go with Scott starting now uh, offense tonight Chase Dow's the center Braden Queen Will Toler the guards Ty Mitchell Zach McNeely the tackles Jax McCarty on one side Braden Clark on the other end is tight end a wide receiver uh, Isaiah Bush wide receiver Preston Cooper the tailback slot back will be uh, Carson Brenniger, Matt Fry will be your starting quarterback for the Scouts. We'll get the defenses here in just a few minutes, and it will be the Big Blacks. Looks like Alex Schrader doing the kicking for the Big Blacks. What a kick. I mean, it is high and in the air. It was all the way back to the one-yard line. Looks like uh, Braden Clark gets it, and he is nailed at the 16-yard line. That's all the return. He's going to get about 15-yard return yeah, on that, that one. That, he is going to be a weapon in tonight's game because he was making kicks from the uh, 
from the 45 yard, 35 yard line out here and having about 10 or 15 or 12 yards uh, of uh, grow, or, uh, left on the kick. Coach Jeremy Dolan's team on the offense come out of the huddle. They will send Braden Clark to the near side. Bush to the far side, Braden Clark. Matt Fry from the gun. Takes a snap, drops back, looking, looking. Fires one down this side to Braden, and it's caught at the 45. He's going to go all the way, 20, 15, 10. Touchdown, Braden Clark. And the scow strike on play number one to put six points on the board. Yeah, just a great throw right there from Matt Fry. Hits Braden Clark in stride. Looks left for just a second to try to look off the, the safety, and it comes right back to this near side. Hits, hits Clark in stride, as we said, and he's able to go all the way into the end zone for a 83-yard touchdown pass. Wow, what a play. Now we've got to see if Scott worked on extra points this week, and it looks like it's going to be Cameron Green back on the field tonight doing the kicking for the Skyhawks. Cole Elkins will be the holder. Waiting on the snap. Jump off sides, and we get a flag. It will be, looks like point jumped off sides. Scott may go for the two-point conversion, and that looks like what they're going to do. They're changing uh, squads now and bringing the uh, offensive unit back to go for two. Let's just hope that first play of the ball game gives the spark the Skyhawks need tonight. Matt Fry is going to go under center. Fry takes it, hands it off to Preston Cooper into the end zone, and there's a wizard flag. Right now. Yeah. That false start against the Skyhawks. Yeah, that will move the ball back. Uh, false start on Scott now. And now... Coach Jeremy Dolan says, let's go for one. So the kicking team now making their way back to the field. Let's see who the kicker is going to be. It looks week. like it's going to be Cameron Green. Cameron He's uh, uh, been out this season with an injury. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, Cameron Green. <laughs> and now Elkins will hold ball at the five. Waiting on the snap. There's the snap. It's back. Kick is away. It is going to be no good. Comes up a little bit short. 11.43 to go in the first quarter. Scott will score on the opening drive of the ball game. We'll take a one-minute timeout. Actually, we'll just uh, keep it here because they'll move qu pretty quickly. It seems like when you try to do these one-minute timeouts quickly, uh, the officials don't give you the full minute. They probably will tonight. But anyway, let's quickly talk about that opening play. You know, Matt Fry took a snap. He looked left. Nothing was there. Braden Clark just come to the sideline and turned it wide open. He outrun the defender and was ahead of him when he caught the ball up around the Scott 45, and he trailed it all the way into the yeah, end zone. I, I honestly, I think that Braden Clark was his target all along. I think that yeah. that look to the left was nothing more than trying to look the safety off. They had two high safeties. Uh, looked like it was either a cover four off our defense or a cover two defense and then just Braden Clark just outran his man and that little subtle look to the left that Matt Fry did to, to kind of check off that safety is, is what made that play right there and allowed that to be open and he just he hit Braden Clark in stride and was able to take it all the way into the end zone. Ryan Neal is on the field to kick off after the touchdown. <laughs> Back deep for the Big Blacks will be on the right-hand side will be number 11, Andrew Schroon. And on the near side, it looks like number two, Jordan Ellie. I'm sorry, it will be Anthony Marek Marrero. Here comes the kick, and it's a high and over in kick. Nice kick. It'll be fielded at the 18. Across the 20, 25, still on his feet. He's got some running room. They finally catch up with him at the 40. He'll fall forward, and it's going to be spotted at about the Point Pleasant 42-yard line. Yeah, good return. He caught that and had a, had a little bit ahead of steam before he caught it, and that allowed him to get to the middle of the field, catch a couple blockers, and then get up to uh, close to midfield at the 42-yard line for good starting field position for these Point Pleasant big blacks. 
Caden Elliott in the backfield. He'll be to the right of the quarterback. Looks like number 37, and I don't even have a number 37 on the roster. Pass to the near side, complete. He nailed at the line of scrimmage. Good job, Scott D. Actually, Caden Hill is the starting quarterback for the Big Blacks. Tackled by David Finnessy. No gain on the play. He got it out to Jordan Elliott over here on this far side. Tried a little bubble screen. It'll be second and 10 for the Big Blacks. Hill, the quarterback from the gun. Hand, fakes the handoff, fires one downfield. It is incomplete. Is it intended for Nathan Bentz? Pass was thrown in front of Bentz. He was trying to make a uh, move across the 50. Couldn't get to it. Incomplete. Third down 10 now for Point Pleasant. Yeah, you had Mason Brown there on, in on the quarterback Hill as he was trying to get rid of that ball and uh, wasn't allow, uh, able to allow him to follow through because of that pressure. And whenever he did, it just wasn't able to get to uh, the intended receiver, Bentz. Hill, empty backfield, drops back, wants to pass, fires one across the middle, almost intercepted by the Skyhawks. It'll go to the ground, and the pass is incomplete. Brings up fourth and ten for the Big Blacks. Trying to make that interception was Caden Mills, and he just could not get to it and hang on. You could tell he was frustrated he couldn't make the interception. Yeah, that, that was a tough pass there. There's a left-handed quarterback in Caden Hill, and, and he was trying to hit the, the receiver running kind of a dig route in the middle of the field and was just late getting them the ball and threw it behind him. Looks like Hill's the punter, and he gets a spiraling kick. It will bounce at the 21 and picked up at the about the 16-yard line, and they're going to catch him. Mary breaks one tackle, come up, crosses a 20, 25. Oh, and he died. I'm telling you what, Carson Brenninger made a leap, tried to get over one of the points. Pleasant players, and it took them both down, but he gets the return back to the 31 after getting caught at the 15. Yeah, almost slipped there as he was uh, recovered that ball, and uh, because of that, his knee almost went down, but he's able to get a good return up above the 30 to the 31 yard line. Here's the Stevens Auto replay. If you're watching on video productions, they catch him back at the 15. He breaks, comes back up the sideline towards Scott, and he tried to leap over that player at the 30, and that's where they both went down. Matt Fry from the gun. Twin receivers both sides of the field for the Skyhawks. Fry takes a snap, drops back. He's under some pressure. He's going to tuck it in. They're going to catch him at pretty much the line of scrimmage and take him backwards. We may lose about three on the play. And it looks like we're going to lose three on the Matt Fry carry, so it's going to be second down and nearly 13 for Scott. Yeah, that time just pocket collapsed on, on Matt as he was dropping back, about a three-step drop. And, and as he got to about his third step, that's whenever he noticed the pocket was collapsing around. He tried to step up, just nowhere to go. Skyhawks line up, two receivers near side, one out wide, far side. Fry from the gun once again. Takes the snap, hands it off to Preston Cooper. Preston Cooper turns up. Uh, on the outside of the left tackle, he'll pick up a couple of those yards. It'll be third down and 11 now for the Skyhawks. Looks like they're going to give him a yard. Yeah, it's going to be actually third and about a yard or 11 and a half. Let's see what the Skyhawks can do here. Right yeah. now you're seeing Point Pleasant's defensive front. They're getting a good push to start off these first two plays here, the second drive. It'll be Bush and Brenniger out to the near side. Clark off far side. Matt Fry drops back, wants to pass, and he's going to tuck it in and run it. He's going to be caught in the backfield, and he's not going to go anywhere. He is uh, slammed by three uh, Point Pleasant uh, tacklers back at the 25-yard line, so we're going to lose some yardage. It's going to be fourth down for Scott. Yeah, that, that Joe, that's an, a, a spot where I'd like to see Matt Fry just get rid of the ball. Don't take that punishment right there. There was three or four guys right there four waiting for you, down, yeah. and then they kind of wrestled you to the ground. Just just go down or give yourself up or just throw that pitch that right out of bounds there and live to fight another play. 
David Fennessy back to punt for Scott, standing back at his own 15-yard line. Nice punt, and it is going to be fielded, and it's fumbled, and Point Pleasant will fall on it at the 41-and-a-half. Uh, Scott had the opportunity to get on it, but uh, it goes, and number four falls on the ball for Point Pleasant. And, and of course we don't have that. <laughs> not on our roster. On our roster. We apologize for that. But Scott had the opportunity, just couldn't get to the ball. First and 10, once again, it'll be first and 10 for, at the 42 for Point Pleasant. The Big Blacks send out a receiver wide to each side. Secondary receiver to the near side. Re receiver goes in motion. They'll hand it off to the guy in the backfield, and the line just keeps shoving, and they'll pick up a couple. It'll be second down and about eight. Let's see where they spot it. Actually, they're only going to give him about a yard on the carry. Actually, about a half a yard. Second down and about nine and a half. It was number 37 on the carry, which as we've already established, we don't, we don't have number. a 37. Receiver lined up far side four. There goes a man in motion. It's over the head of the quarterback. He's chasing the ball down. And let's see if the scouts can get to him, and they will sack him all the way back at the 35-yard line. He picked up and tried to make some forward progress, made a little, but they caught him at the 35. So that will be, let's see, maybe they're going to spot it at the 34. They will, and that will be third down and 18. 18, yeah. Big Blacks huddled up. Play clock at, at rolling at about 12. Now they come out of the huddle. And they're going to go for it. They run for it. Number 37 comes up the middle. He'll pick up a couple, and that'll be all. That'll bring up fourth down once again for the Big Blacks. Brady, uh, Brody, Brody Brower is Bowen. Bowen. I'm sorry. 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 <laughs> at least we've got a name to go with that number now. Punter standing back at the 27-yard line. High snap, and he gets it off. It's a high spiraling kick. It is going to be fielded by Scott at the 28. Breaks a tackle. I believe that is Brenniger goes up the far sideline. He will return it. Looks like they will spot it. At the 30, looks like they're going to spot it at the 33, and that's where Scott will put it in play first and 10 at their own 33 yard line. Carson Brenninger on the return. Scott Hawks ball at the 33. First down. 7-11, showing on the first quarter clock. Scouts lead this one 6 0, scoring on the opening drive in tonight's ball game. Scott Quinn receivers each side of the field. Matt Fry from the gun. Preston Cooper to his right. Passes to the near side, complete to Brenniger. Brenniger across the 40, 45, 50. He's going to outspread him, 40, 30. He's going to go all the way to the end zone. He's at the five. He's in for the touchdown. What a run by to Crocs and Brenniger. Two big plays for the Skyhawks. That one was good for 67 yards. Yes, 67 yards. Just a simple bubble screen. Carson Brenner lines up in the slot position, and Matt Fry does a good job of getting the ball to him quick. And in a great seal out here by number one, Braden Clark, who caught that earlier touchdown pass, that was able to free Carson Brenner. And that's a foot race that Carson Brenner is going to win with just about everybody in the state all year round. Carson Green on to attempt the point after touchdown once again. Elkins the holder. Snap is back, ball down, the kick is away, looks good from here. It is good, and the Scouts jump out to a 13-0 lead. We'll take a one-minute break. You're listening to Scott Scout Sports on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. When I tell you that... Hey. Jake from State Farm. We have to know. Yeah, these are State Farm pajamas. No, what if we have to talk to somebody about our policy, but it's late at night? Call us 24-7. Great. Because what if someone still calls his mom for everything? We'll walk you through everything. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Oh. Yeah, mom, everything's great. Yeah. 
I mean, uh, not my mom. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. The Tint Guy has big news. The newest location is now open in Barbersville. Voted best in the Valley since 2020. Getting your windows tinted is now twice as easy. Go to the best, the Tint Guy. Hey, Tint Guy here. Come see us at our new location in Barbersville. Scott Skyhawks on Z92 and the Skyhawks Sports Network. Scouts strike twice early, jump out to a 13 to 0 lead. 6.59 showing on a first quarter clock as Ryan Neal has it teed off and ready to kick it away for the Skyhawks. Here comes the kick. It's a end over end kick. It will take a bounce. It bobbles around. They pick it up to 15. He's across the 20, 25, trying to get around the outside and finally bring him down after he crosses a 30 up and around the 31 yard line. And that's where the big block will put it in play. On the return is number 11, Andrew Schroon. I'm sorry, number three. That would be Jordan Elliott on the return for the Big Blacks. Ball will be spotted at the point, 31-yard line. Here they come out of the huddle. Number eight, Caden Hill, the quarterback, got a man in motion. Hands it off to the second man through. He gets a little room. He's across the 35 up to about the 36-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. Let's see where they spot it. We'll give them five, second and a short five. I believe it was number two, Anthony Marrero, was the ball carrier on that play. But I honestly could not tell. It looked like two went in motion. I thought they handed it to the running back on the far side, but you could be correct. Twin receivers, far sides, heel from the gun. There goes number two in motion. The court had snapped over the quarterback's head, and he is drilled back at the 23-yard line. Sack for the Skyhawks. Skyhawks with the sack. Brings up third down. Actually, he gets an excellent spot. They're going to spot it at the 25. Should have been a back a couple of more yards, but it's going to be third down. Now for the big blacks, going to be third and 16. Third and 16. That'd be, should be third and 18, I think. Here come the big blacks out of the huddle. They'll bring twin receivers to both sides of the ball. Hill, empty backfield. He turns, rolls left, and he has to get rid of the ball quickly. It's intercepted by Scott. He's across the 40. It's Carson Brenniger on the return. Goes down the sidelines, knocked out of bounds and around the 21, 22-yard line. But Carson Brenniger heads that move. He was the second time Skyhawk to touch the ball. It was deflected right in the hands of Carson Brenniger, and he ripped it right down the Skyhawk sideline. Yeah, I believe it was uh, Ty Mitchell was the original one that got his hand on the football and just kind of just turned into a tip drill after that. And uh, Carson's able to make a couple people miss and get down to the 15-yard line to make it a, uh, a big drive here starting in the red zone. It was a uh, tough snap. Quarterback tried to get rid of it quickly, and it paid off for the Skyhawks. Skyhawks set and ready. Matt Fry from the gun takes it, fakes the handoff, fires across complete to Carson Brenniger inside the five. Down, it looks like it's going to be to the four-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Skyhawks. Yeah, RPO look that we've seen here that Scott's got accustomed to the last couple of years. RPO look hits Carson Brenniger on that little slant pattern. Fry goes under center, comes back, hands it off up the middle, and it looks like Preston Cooper will pick up maybe a couple, maybe three. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like it's going to be at the two, so a gain of three. Gain of two, I'm sorry. So it'll be second and goal from the two. Scott's number 65, Will Toller, coming out of the game. Look like he was limping maybe a little bit. Skyhawks come out of the huddle. They'll spread it wide. Isaiah Bush lines up to the near side. Braden Clark to the far side. Fry from the gun. Takes a snap. Hands it off to Preston Cooper. He's into the end zone for a touchdown. Preston Cooper on a two-yard run. And the Skyhawks 
are really opening the eyes of the Point Pleasant Big Blacks as we're 419 into the first quarter, or with 419 left, Skyhawks lead this one 19 to nothing. Yeah, just a little isolation play right there from the shotgun position, inside handoff. Looked like Car uh, Preston was trying to go through that uh, three hole and just got a cutback block to where he's able to get through, go right in from behind the center, and he's able to get in there for the touchdown. Cameron Green on to attempt the extra point once again. Cole Elkins, the holder. Tennessee, the long snapper. Ball's down, the kick is away, looks good from here. It is good, and the Scott Skyhawks jump out to a 20 to nothing lead. We'll take a one minute break. You're listening to Scott Football on the Skyhawks Sports Network. office, we will take better care of you than anybody else. Provide you with the best auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, and life insurance. I want our family to be able to take care of your family, and I promise you we will be able to do that here at Caldwell Insurance Agency. The Big Blacks, they jump out to a 20 to nothing lead. 419 to still showing on the clock in the first quarter. Ryan Neal has it teed off, ready to kick it away for the Scouts. Here comes the kick, high end over end kick. It will be fielded at the 23. Up the near side, they cross to the middle of the field. It will be number two on the return, Anthony Marrero. And they will take him down at the 33, 34 yard line. Let's see where they spot it. It looks like they're going to spot it. Still waiting on the spot from the officials at the 33. That's where the Big Blacks will put it in play first and 10. Point out of the huddle. They'll send twin receivers near side. Single wide out to the far side. Now they move two. They'll send twin receivers both sides. Pretty much an empty backfield for Hill. Hill from the gun. Hill. Fakes the handoff. Quarterback keeper's got a little room. He's across the 40. He'll pick up a couple, but that'll be all. Yeah, that time it was just a, a – it looked like a read option play, but it looked like it was a design run for the quarterback, Caden Hill. He uh, fakes it to the uh, the first man through, which is Bowen, and then he comes around this near side, and he picks up a couple blocks to get up to about the 40-and-a-half yard line, so it picks up about seven yards on the play. Two. Picks up two on oh, the play. I'm sorry. Yeah, I had it wrong on, the, on this thing. Sorry. Second and eight. Hill has a running back to his left. Four receivers out wide. Fakes a handoff. Drops back. Wants to pass. Fires one across the way. And it is incomplete. Intended for number two, Anthony Marrero. And it will be third and eight now for the Big Blacks. Ball spotted at the point 41 yard line. I think the Big Blacks are still in shock at this point. <laughs> 3.30 showing on a first quarter clock. Skyhawks lead at 20 to nothing. Here comes Point Pleasant out of the huddle. They'll send a receiver out wide to the far side. That is Dawson Rollins. They'll go in tight to the near side hash mark. Marrero goes in motion. Quarterback throws one down. Intercepted by the Skyhawks. And this time it is, once again, is that Carson Brenninger? Once again, it, it is. It's a pick six for Carson Brenninger. And what a game that young man has had already. And we are still in the first quarter of play. A pick six. And the Skyhawks lead this one 26 to nothing. Yeah, the, the first one was a, was a tip drill that uh, Ty Mitchell got his hands on first. This time, the, the quarterback, Caden Hill, faked the uh, the little swing pass out to the running back, and he come back and 
I didn't see a receiver in that vicinity. It looked like he threw it right to Carson Brenniger. And, again, with Carson's speed, there's nobody going to catch him in those situations. What yard line were they on? The 40. So it's a 40-yard. Pick six. Pick six. Carson Green on, or Cameron Green on, to kick the extra point once again. Elkins, the holder, the snap is back. Kick is away. What a kick. And that one looks good from here, and it is good as the Scott Skyhawks jump out to a 27 Nothing lead with 319 showing on a first quarter clock. We'll step aside for a one minute break. You're listening to the Skyhawk Sports Network on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. As mayor of Huntington, there's three things I promise everyone. A 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty, free maintenance, and the best price right up front with friends and family pricing. Dutch Miller Hyundai in Huntington. I mean, Hundington is the place to get deals like 0% financing on Elantras, Konas, and Santa Fe's, or drive this venue for as low as $1.99 a month. No, 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 no. It's Hundington. It's going to be the biggest thing since Santa Fe, maybe even Tucson. been a part of our community for over 55 years. WZAC-FM, Danville, Madison. And the kick is away by Neil. They go for the short kick, flag on the play, Skyhawks offsides. So they'll bring it back and kick it again. But I think I don't think anybody would have dreamed Scott would lead Point Pleasant 27 nothing with over three minutes to go in the first quarter. No, no, this is, this is something that... Uh, <laughs> No one really seen coming <laughs> yeah, no. there, and I think that um, even even Scott would have said if they got off to this start, it'd be something that uh, they thought would be um, pretty crazy. Coming up at the half, we have an interview. We got three sections. One of them will be tonight with the uh, executive director of the WVSSAC, David Price. Had a great sit down with him earlier in the week. Ron Neal has it teed up and ready to go. And then we'll have two more sessions of that interview next week. The kick. Now, this one's a spiraling kick. It bounces at the 27, rolls inside to the 22, picked up across the 25, and he is hit hard, number two. Uh, it will be Anthony Marrero on the return, but he is hit hard out there by Scott's uh, Mason Brown to bring him down, and the Big Blacks will put the ball in play at the 30, their own 36-yard line. First down, Point Pleasant. But anyway, I've known David Price for a long time, had a great, uh, we probably spent an hour and a half, got about a 20, 22, 23-minute interview out of him. And like I said, we'll be session one tonight, and then the other two will be next Friday night when we go to Chapmanville. Double... Pitch in the backfield and taken down as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Tackle out there made by, I believe that was Brenniger, wasn't it? Brings up second down. I think so, yes. Uh, yep, or actually David Fennessy made the tackle. It was Brody Bowen was the ball carrier. He's ended up getting about two yards up to about the 38-ish yard line. Gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine now for the Big Blacks. They'll send a receiver out wide each side. Quarterback from the gun. Caden Hill takes a snap. Hands it off to number 37. Goes around the right side. And he'll spin across the line of scrimmage. He'll fall forward up to about the 40, maybe the 41. He'll pick up about three, maybe four yards. Actually going to give him about four yards on the carry. It'll be third and five now for the Big Blacks. Yeah, that time just off tackle play from the shotgun position. Bowen gets it, goes around that far side and gets a, gets able to pick up a couple of blocks and gets upfield for a positive yardage. And this is the, the type of third down situation that Point Pleasant can live with. Quarterback goes from a gun and it's snapped. It's falling around on the ground. It's still bobbing around. It is dove on behind the line of scrimmage. It looks like Point Pleasant will come up with the ball. 
Looks like number 52, one of the linemen, Dylan Kiefer, will come up with the ball, but that will bring up fourth down and 11 now for the Big Blacks. Yeah, just just back to back to back high snaps. One has happened every possession for the Big Blacks, and that puts them behind the chains, and that that's what's that, that's what's keeping them from doing anything in this football game so far. And there goes the kick. It will hit at the 45 of Scott. Roll out of bounds, and they're going to give Scott the ball at their own 45 yard line. So Scott has the ball. It'll be first and 10. They come out of the huddle. Isaiah Bush lines up wide to the near side. Braden Clark will go wide to the far side. Carson Brenniger will go in motion. From the gun, Fry drops back. Hail Mary's it downfield once again, and he is tripped, and there's no flag. Yeah, they're going to call it uncatchable. I think that's a good no call. But anyway, when he turned to make a way back to the ball, he ran, was ran into by one of the point uh, defenders. No flag, yes. second and 10. Incidental contact, ball, ball was uncatchable. I think it's probably a pretty good no call there. Skyhawks set wide receivers to each side of the field. Matt Fry from the gun. Standing at his own 40, takes a snap, fakes the handoff, comes across the near side. And he is hit right when the ball gets to his fingertips. Braden Clark was the intended receiver, and they, he actually was double teamed. Yeah, that time, that time the uh, the outside linebacker read that play really, really well, and that because of that, he was able to give help to the corner out here on this outside, on this near side, and that's what caused that uh, pass breakup. It's like it's going to be a penalty against Scott as they're moving back. Waiting on the official. Illegal receiver downfield. And they're going to decline the penalty. Third and 10 is what the scouts will have. The ball at their own 45-yard line. And now they're going to get a penalty on number four down here, Four Point Pleasant. He jumps, tries to jump the snap count and come up and, and press Braden Clark. And because of that, he jumped uh, jumped offsides into the neutral zone. So I bring up third, third and down and five. <clears throat> third and five for the Skyhawks. Ball right at midfield at the 50. Fry from the gun. Takes it, hands it off to Preston Cooper. No, he still has it. They're going to sack him back at the 39-yard line. I thought, sure, he handed it off to Preston Cooper, but he hung on to it, and it cost him dearly. Brings up fourth down. First time the punting unit for Scott on the field tonight. First time Scott hadn't scored on a drive tonight. Yeah, they're going to lose 11 yards on the play all the way back to the 39-yard line. And they blitzed him to boot, so uh, they had his number on that one. Bush will line up to the near side. Fennessey back to punt for Scott. Nine seconds on the play clock, 22 seconds on the game clock. Tennessee has the ball, plenty of time, gets a nice high kick, and they are going to take it at the 30-29 yard line. He'll go right, trying to get to the other side. He's got some room, and there's no Skyhawks over there, and finally they catch up with him and run him out of bounds at the Scott 31 yard line. His number two, Anthony Marrero, on the uh, on the return, and. Um, yeah, just found all kinds they, of real estate around that far sideline. It was like Scott was not pursuing the return. So now the Big Blacks have the ball across the 50 for the first time tonight. 43 yards on the punt return for Marrero.
Hill, empty backfield. Drops back, wants to pass, and he throws the ball down there. It's going to be intercepted once again by the Skyhawks. Carson Berger again, I think. This time it is Isaiah Bush on the interception. Was that not Isaiah Bush? It's Carson Brenniger. Oh, was it? Yeah. Wow. He's got my vote for player of the game, and we're just at the end of the first quarter. We need to take a step aside, take a one-minute break. The Scott Scouts lead Point Pleasant 27-0 at the end of one. You're listening to the Scouts on WZAC Video Productions and the Scouts Sports Network. Relationships in life are more important than the one between you and your Michelin tires. Rugged, long-lasting Michelin truck tires. Michelin, a better way forward. With Erie Insurance here at Caldwell Insurance Agency, I want to provide you with the best customer service available. I want to provide you with coverages that nobody else can provide you with, along with affordable rates. I promise you when you come in this office, we will take better care of you than anybody else. Provide you with the best auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, and life insurance. I want our family to be able to take care of your family, and I promise you we will be able to do that here at Caldwell Insurance Agency. Field. Here's the voice of the Scott Skyhawks, Joe Linville. Just when you think Point Pleasant is about to strike, Skyhawks come up with another interception by Carson Brenniger. Matt Fry from the gun. The ball will be spotted at the Scott 25-yard line. Fry takes it, throws it across the way to Brenniger. He's got a catch. He goes up near the – he's got to pick a game uh, pickup of about eight or nine yards. We'll have to wait and see where they spot it. He's going to be right down at the first, right at the right first the, down mark. Yeah, it's going to be pretty close. Game of about nine brings up second down. Yeah, it's going to be more like nine and three-quarter and <laughs> just a few inches short of the 10-yard marker. Here comes Brenniger out to the near side. Bush out to the near side. Clark lines up wide far side. Matt Fry calling signals from the gun. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, pumps one down the field. He's got a man. Oh, wide open. It was Jax McCarty who was wide open, and it was just, a, I mean, a split half an inch away from his fingertips. He couldn't hang on to it, and the ball falls incomplete. Yeah, that time you just see Matt had to kind of jump in order to see if, if McCarty was open <laughs> over that big defensive line that Point Pleasant has out there. And whenever he did it, he had to kind of get up on his tiptoes in order to throw that ball to get it over the line. And it was just out of the reach of Jax McCarty, and it would have been a foot race to the end zone. Empty backfield for – no, actually, uh, Fry goes under the center. I think Carson Brenniger's the one back there. And hands it off to Brenniger. Brenniger goes right. And he will have enough yardage for the first down. They'll move the sticks. Moves the ball up to the 36-yard line. And first down, Scott. Fry comes over and talks to Glenn Fry, the offensive coordinator. We've seen Scott go under center more times a night than they have the last three years. <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, the Wayne game, I think they did a couple times. And Fry goes under center once again. Single running back to backfield. Fry drops back. He's rolling left. Throws it down the field. He's got Isaiah Bush wide open. And they will catch him inside the 34-yard line. Another big first down play by the Skyhawks. Yeah, just uh, a roll out to the near side over here. Good job there by Matt Fry setting his feet, getting that shoulder around. And the ball's just a little bit underthrown. Isaiah Bush had to kind of come back to it just enough, slow up, but he's able to get it out enough to where Bush can get to it and be the only one to get to it. And he picks up a big, big play here for Scott. Scott's, Scott's come out of the huddle. <laughs> Fry goes under center once again. Fry takes a snap, pitches it back to Brenniger. Brenniger goes right. He's going around. He's across the 30, and he's going to have a first down, it looks like. 
over around the 25-yard line on the far side of the field and move the sticks. That'll be another Scott first down. Well, maybe not. Oh, man, terrible spot. Second down. They're going to it's going to be about six inches short of the first down, second down in inches. Yeah, that, the, you're starting to see those little toss play out around the, the outside there, and Carson does a good job of, of not waiting to, to kind of make a move. He just went straight to there and was able to pick up nine yards. Fry once again goes under center. Fry takes a snap, hands it off quickly to Preston Cooper. Cooper's open up the middle. He's going into the end zone for another Scott Skyhawk touchdown. From the 25, or the, yeah, 25 yard line, Preston Cooper on a 25 yard run. Yeah, that time it's kind of set up in the wing formation there and uh, had the up back, which was Preston Cooper. He was the first man through. Mac, Matt Fry gave it to him. And as much as they've been kind of riding Carson Brenniger here in this first half, I guess Point Pleasant kind of followed the man in uh, that, that uh, was in the backfield in Carson Brenniger. And because of that, left a gigantic hole open for, for Preston Cooper to come up the middle. Carson Green on to kick the extra point. Elkins once again the holder. The snap is back. The kick is away. It is no good. Bounces off the crossbar. So the Skyhawks lead this one 33 to nothing with 10 06 showing on a second quarter clock. You're listening to Scott Scott Football on WZAC, the Skyhawk Sports Network, and Video Productions. At this the Southern Pineapple in downtown Madison is your choice for women's clothing and accessories. They have styles that fit all ages along with local handmade jewelry. From elegant to everyday wear, the Southern Pineapple is your place to shop. Find us on Facebook, subscribe to our page, so you can see all the latest products and inventory. Come and shop at our unique boutique and be sweet. At Miller Brothers Pharmacy, we are dedicated to providing outstanding personalized customer service at an affordable price. We are your one-stop shop for all your pharmacy and medical needs. Our staff has over 90 years of experience, so you can count on fast, personal attention. Our pharmacy is proud to offer delivery service for your convenience with free delivery for patients within Madison and Danville city limits. Contact a member of our team about delivery today. Now, back to more black and gold football. Here is Joe Linville and Chris Barrett. Ryan Neal ready to kick it away for the Skyhawks. As soon as we get done with the kickoff, we'll uh, hopefully be able to take another quick look at that replay of Preston Cooper's touchdown run as Scott leads this one 33 to nothing with 10.06 to go in the first half. Kick bobbles over and over, and it will roll out of bounds. Yeah. Here is the uh, Stevens Auto replay. Watch uh, Cooper come up the middle. And he just, man, the scouts just made him a big hole. He went right into the end zone. And it looks like they're going to spot the ball at the Point Pleasant 32-yard line. And that's where they'll put it in play first and 10. Yeah, not a very good uh, decision there by the Bowen. He caught that ball, which would have easily probably went out of bounds. <laughs> and they would have got the ball about five yards ahead of where they're at now. But... Uh, Caden Hill from the gun calling numbers for Point Pleasant. There goes a man in motion, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper. He is nailed in the backfield for another quarterback sack. There was about three black jerseys back there just hit him immediately. As soon as he dropped uh, the ball into his hands, dropped back, and he had nowhere to go. Loss of two on the play, second and 12. Yeah, good push from that Scott defensive line over on that right side. Uh, which is Ty Mitchell and I believe number 52. That would be. Which, or he's Ty Mitchell. Dalton Milam is yeah. number 51. He's the one that the, the two that got the really good push over on that right side. Caden Hill calling numbers from the gun. Got a man in motion. They're going to pitch it out to that man in motion, number 14. He's got a little running room. He's going to pick up a first down. He'll get all the way up to the Point Pleasant 45-yard line. Is that number 14? 14. Nathan Bentz. I believe there's going to be a flag on the play, too. 
Yeah, looks like they're going to come back with it. Yep. Point Pleasant walking back. Holding is signaled against the Point Pleasant Big Black. He picked up about 13 on the play. Yeah, he's going to go way back. They're back at the 22-yard 20, line, so it's going to be second down and 10 or 11. No, oh, 20, I'm sorry, you're right. Hill takes it, and quarterback keeper, he's coming up the middle. He's got some running room. He'll pick up about 10, maybe 11 on the play. He faked the handoff to a man in motion, come right, kept it. Hill carried it right up the middle. And they're going to give him about 11. Looks like yeah, that's 33-yard line. Yeah, they're going to give him 11 yards on the carry. Third down and 11 now, or third down and nine now for Point Pleasant. They come out of the huddle. Quarterback from the gun. Got a flanker and a running back to his right. Got a man in motion. Drops back. Going to flip it to the man in motion. Coming around to the near side. He gets outside, and he is taken down by David Fennessy. He's going to gain a little, but it's going to bring up fourth down for the Big Blacks. It's Nathan Bentz, uh, an option play there uh, from Point Pleasant. They bring that uh, now twice on this drive. That's uh, the play that got him about 13 yards before the holding penalty. But uh, just nowhere to run on this side of the, the field for Brents. Gain of about three on the play, fourth and six. And they'll bring on their punting unit. Carson Branniger back deep for Scott. And the punt, ew, an end over end punt. It hits it to 40, goes down the sideline. And they're going to leave it alone. It will roll back to the 19-yard line. And it was it had a funky spin to it. It was just spinning around. And uh, Brenniger was not comfortable trying to pick it up. He stepped back away from it and let it spin. And they're going to spot it first and 10 at the Scott 19-yard line. Yeah, with the way that uh, the things that Carson Brenniger has been able to do in this first half, that's probably the best-case scenario for Point Pleasant. Isaiah Brown. <clears throat> 7 and 18 showing on a second quarter clock. Skyhawks lead this one 33 to 0 over the Point Pleasant Big Blacks. Matt Fry moves back to the gun. Takes a snap, drops back, wants to pass. Fires one across the way. It is in and out of the hands of Braden Clark. Pass incomplete to Braden Clark. He just couldn't find the handle on it over there. It yeah. was the issue with that one is is that uh, Matt Fry never come off of Braden Clark over there. He he stared him down the entire time and and that kind of gave the the defensive back an opportunity to go that way. But he had Carson Brenniger about seven yards from the line of scrimmage wide open over here right now over the middle. Fry goes from the gun once again. Takes the snap, drops back, looking this side. Brenniger caught at the 25, 30, 35, 40. He's going to run it all the way again. He's at the 40, 30, 20, 10. Touchdown, Carson Brenniger. That's the same exact play that they just ran, and that is the same exact look that uh, Matt Fry had on the last play. All he had to do was look over and see uh, Carson Brenniger about that same exact location of where he was at. And it probably would have been the exact same play on first down. Here's the Thornhill Auto instant replay. If you're watching on video production, Matt Fry drops back and Carson hit Carson Brenniger to 25, and it was just all Brenniger's speed and agility as he just smoked the defenders down the Scott sideline of the field for the touchdown. Carson Green on or Cameron Green on to kick once again for the Skyhawks. Elkins the holder, the snap is back, ball down, kick is away, looks good from here, it is good, and the Scott Skyhawks have put 40 points on the board, 7.01 to go in the second quarter, you're listening to Scott Skyhawks football on WZAC, the Skyhawks Sports Network and video productions. 
out to Danville and come see us where the Make the Summer Sales event is in full swing at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. We've got savings on all models, including up to $14,000 below MSRP on the 2023 Ram Limiteds and 15% off MSRP on the 2023 Jeep Compasses. And the new 2024 Wranglers are awesome and arriving daily. So come see us for the Make the Summer Sales event at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Route 119 in Danville. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.hanleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. We'll bring it back and kick it again. Matt Fry doing the kicking for Scott after that. Carson Brenniger. What was that, 80 yards? 80. It was, hang on, I can tell you. Just, it was a 81-yard touchdown catch. So far, the scoreboard tonight has been all Skyhawks as they lead this one 40 0, 701 to go in the first half here at Skyhawk Field. Ryan Neal has it teed up to kick it away once again, this time kicking from the 35. Kick is up and away, and it is fielded by one of the front linemen at the Scott, 46 yard line, and the Big Blacks will get a good start on this one. I tell you, um, Andrew Blaine uh, might want to uh, sign that kid up for uh, middle infield because that was hot off the foot yeah. of Ryan Neal. He caught it like it was nothing. They're going to spot the ball at the Scott 45. So, nice Christmas gift from the Skyhawks to the Big Blacks. Thanks to Alpha Electrical this week, put up some new lighting. Sky, the field's a little brighter tonight, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Had to do something. There goes a man in motion. Fire across the way. It's complete. Oh, he's drilled, and the pass is incomplete. What a hit by Isaiah Bush over there. The pass was complete into the man in motion, but as soon as he caught the ball and turned around, Isaiah Bush dropped his shoulder, put it right in there, and that ball come popping out. And the great part about that is Isaiah Bush read it from the get-go. Once he went into motion, he kind of come Isaiah down. Bush. He was about five or six yards play back uh, playing off of giving the cushion to the receiver, and whenever he seen that motion, he actually come down closer to the line of scrimmage and then jumped it as soon as that, that pass touched the hands of Birdie Bowen. Uh, Isaiah Bush was there. Caden Hill calling signals. At quarterback four, the Big Blacks from the gun. Got a man in motion, empty backfield. They'll fire it away, and a sack back there once again. This time by Scott's number 52. That is Ty Mitchell. And, man, he was all over that quarterback, and a big sack there, a loss of seven yards. Yeah, just uh, come from that middle linebacker position, just untouched and was able to get to uh, Caden Hill. And uh, Caden Hill tried to tried to fake the uh, the swing pass again and then looked downfield. And as soon as he got done through his uh, play fake, uh, Ty Mitchell was right there in his face. Third down and 17, 18, uh, 17. Man in motion. Option pitch the man in motion upfield. They catch him at the 50. He'll fall forward. He'll pick up a little bit of that yardage, but it'll bring up fourth down once again for Point Pleasant. Yeah, they're going to give him forward progress to about the Scott 46 yard line. Fourth down and 11 now for Point. And they're going to try to gain a little bit of momentum here and go for it. They are going for it on fourth. Fourth and 11. Wide receiver out to the near side of the field. He lined up offside. Here comes a man in motion. And the 
pursuit to the quarterback. They can't get to him. He throws the pass downfield. It is incomplete. Scott will take over on downs at the Scott 46-yard line. The well, pass was intended for number 11, Andrew Schoon, and was just kind of thrown. He was just thrown. <laughs> yeah, kind of underthrew him and kind of nowhere near him at the same time as Schoon tried to come back to the ball and make a little bit of a diving play, but the Scott defender was able to come up. It looked like Braden Clark was able to come and get a hand on it. Scouts will start the drive at their own 46. Comes Isaiah Bush lining up wide to the near side. Braden Clark will line up wide to the far side. Carson Brenniger at tight. A slot, and Matt Fry goes from the gun. Fry drops back under a little pressure. He rolls right and tried to throw it over to Jax McCarty, but he threw it a little high, out of bounds, incomplete, second down 10 for Scott. Scott kind of looked like they were trying to set up a little tunnel screen over there, uh, had the offensive lineman moving to that side, and then uh, just kind of had other receivers going down the field as there's a penalty right now it's against the Scott. Skyhawks. Yeah, it's going to be against Scott. Must be a holding penalty. It's going to be a 10-yarder. Waiting on the official to signal. <laughs> and I don't guess he's going to. Must have been holding. Still first down for Scott. First down and 20. Fry lines up from the gun. Fry. Hands it off to Brenninger coming to the near side. He's around the outside across the 50. And they'll knock him out of bounds at the 35-yard line. But Carson Brenniger is having one heck of a ball game tonight. Hand up. Carson Bulldozer Brenniger! <laughs> what a, these Skyhawks are hot tonight, I'm telling you. First and 10, Scott, ball at the Point Pleasant 33 yard line. Braden Clark out wide. Brenniger, Brenniger goes in motion. Pass to Brenniger, complete in the backfield. He's going to have the first down, and it's going to be close to a first down. Pickup of nine, maybe ten. Let's see where they spot it. It's going to be just a little bit short. Yeah, they're going to mark it about a yard short. Was there a flag on the play? Yes. Holding on the Skyhawks. Oh, goodness. Hold down near the first down marker, so they will bring the ball. Well, actually, it's going to be about five yards in. They're going to spot the ball. We got a down Skyhawk player, and it is Brenniger. So we have an official timeout on the field. Brenniger's on his knees. Don't know if he just got winded or couple of trainers out there with him. 4.59 to go in the first half of this ball game. Skyhawks lead at 40 to nothing. And Brenniger still, now there's a couple more trainers walk out there. I'd be concerned about him too, the game he's had here in the first half. Yeah, that last play, they just kind of modify what they've tried to been do all game. They've kind of been going to him in the passing game with that bubble screen. Yeah. This time they send him in motion, and this time it's a swing pass. After they fake the handoff, they go to him out there in the flat, and Carson's just able to make a couple people miss and use his speed to get to the boundary. And he walks off the field under his own power. I think he just got the wind knocked out of him because they come up and offered him water, and he went, no, I'm good, and come on to the sideline. He'll have to sit out of play. I think he deserves a couple of plays off. <laughs> exactly. It will be first and 15. 15. Second 15. Oh, it is first and 15. Yep, first and this 15. This thing keeps messing with me. So they put Caden Clark, or Caden Clark. Woo! No, it should be second. Caden Sharp's in. Uh, they're showing first, first down. It is first. Never mind. I don't know what I'm talking about. Not the officials going back out with a couple of the coaches out where Brenniger was I down. Think, I think someone got sick. Oh, it could be. The person may have got sick a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he put a little water out there. Now everybody will stay away from the 34-yard line on the near side hash mark. 
Scouts ready. They'll send Caden Sharps out wide of the near side. Isaiah Bush will line up at the flanker position. Matt Fry from the gun. Hands it off to Carson or Preston Cooper up the middle. He's going all the way to 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Preston Cooper and the Scott Skyhawks. From the 38 yard line, Preston Cooper took the hand off and just bolted his way right up the middle. And the Skyhawks on the board once again. I mean, people here are in shock as Scott jumped up to a 46 yard or 46 nothing lead. Cameron Green on to kick once again. Elkins the holder. Snap is back, ball down, kick is away. Looks good from here. It is good. 47 to nothing. The Scouts lead the Point Pleasant Big Blacks. Number six over number 12, number two over number 12. It's more like it. 4.43 to go in the first half. We'll just keep it here. And these Skyhawks, they just jumped on that first play from scrimmage, scored a touchdown, and they've been pretty much unstoppable ever since. Yeah, and this is the difference between, you know, starting fast and, and hitting that lull that we've seen the last couple games. You know, even in the Hoover game, you can kind of say that the offense didn't start clicking until really the second half. And then against Wayne, you kind of argue that it never got clicking. And then against Sissonville, it wasn't until the second quarter they got clicking. Here you start seeing they've come out and uh, they come come out ready to play from the from the very kickoff. And this is the difference between you know what we talked about, Joe, explosive plays, getting out, doing what you're supposed to be doing, and, and building this lead. And the scout coaches were a little concerned uh, about Point Pleasant, their, you know, their agility and ability and so forth. But uh, so far here in the first half, the scout show they have come to play football. Ron Neal ready to kick it away. It's a high end over end kick. It will be fielded at the 15 across the 20. Comes to the near side, 30. And number four on the return. Number, and they're still running up sideline. Finally taken out of bounds by a couple of Skyhawks. They should have had him back here at about the 34, 35. But they let him return it up to, looks like the 43 yard line. That's where Point Pleasant will put it play first and ten. Kickoff return. Push down pass by number 23, Mikey Bias. Mikey Bias on the tackle. And now he's over there in that uh, far cornerback position over there. Caden Hill calling signals from the gun. Carson's back out here too. Hill takes it, hands it off up the middle, nowhere. As number 37, Brady Bowen, goes absolutely nowhere. He'll go down for a loss of a yard. Second and 11 now for the Big Blacks. Coming up to half, we will be interviewing, talking to David Price the executive director of the WVSSCC. We have a timeout. We'll take a one-minute timeout. 4.13 to go and a half. Scott leads this one 47 to nothing here on the Skyhawk Sports Network. Choosing a new home is well within your reach at Clayton Homes, where they have many models and styles to choose from. Stop and visit Angie Wolf, Charlie Mitchell, as mayor of Huntington, there's three things I promise everyone. A 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty, free maintenance, and the best price right up front with friends and family pricing. Dutch Miller Hyundai in Huntington. I mean, Huntington is the place to get deals like 0% financing on Elantras, Konas, and Santa Fe's. Or drive this venue for as low as $199 a month. No, 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 no. It's Huntington. It's going to be the biggest thing since Santa Fe. Maybe even Tucson.
Down at 11 for Point Pleasant. Ball at their 43-yard line, and it's fumbled in the backfield. They will fall on it. Caden Hill, the quarterback, will come up with it. And he is down, the quarterback. And the officials calling timeout for the trainers to come out and attend to him. I think he just got winded. Yeah, a couple of Skyhawks tried to dive on that football as it was on the carpet and got on top of him, and I think that probably – Probably knocked him knocked him out pretty good. He's laying there. I think he just got winded because uh, David Fennessy went up to him and spoke to him, and he just kind of waved him off there. So, but anyway, the Scott Skulls lead this one 47 to nothing. We still have three minutes 59 seconds to go here in the in the half. It all started from the original play of scrimmage. Matt, Fly, Matt Fry connected to Braden Clark, 83 yards, and the Skyhawks have not looked back since. Caden Hill sets up. Now he stands up. He's walking off the field under his own power. Kind of a little slow getting off the field. So Now let's see who the Big Blacks bring in to replace Hill at the quarterback position. They will huddle up back inside the 35. Now they break the huddle. Is that number 11? Or Bowen, 37. Got a man in motion. Fakes the handoff, goes up the middle. He's got some running room. He's going to break one. He's going for the end zone. He's at the 30, 20, 10, touchdown. Number 14 on a quarterback keeper, Nathan Bentz. Quarterback keeper, touchdown for point. That was shades of a wildcat type offense right there where you just line a running back or receiver up. That quarterback faked the handoff, and then he just keeps it and and goes right through that two-hole, and, and it was, that was off to the races. How many yards? It was a 61-yard touchdown wow. run. Looks like point is going to attempt to kick the extra point. It will be number 24, Alex Schrader. The ball's down, bobbled, and they can't do it. He's tackled, and they will fail the PAT. Scouts lead this one 47-6, to six, and we'll take a quick one-minute timeout here on the Skyhawk Sports Network. Hey. Jake from State Farm. We have to know. Yeah. Is a state farm pajamas. No, what if we have to talk to somebody about our policy, but it's late at night? Call us 24 7. Great, because what if someone still calls his mom for everything? We'll walk you through everything. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Oh, yeah, mom, everything's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, not my mom. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. The Tint Guy has big news. The newest location is now open in Barbersville. Voted best in the Valley since 2020. Getting your windows tinted is now twice as easy. Go to the best, The Tint Guy. Hey, Tint Guy here. Come see us at our new location in Barbersville. on Z92. Back at Scott Field where the Point Pleasant Big Blacks put their first touchdown of the night on the board. Scott leads by a score of 47 to 6. They failed on their PAT. And it looks like, uh, once again, Schrader is on to do the kicking, the kickoff for the Big Blacks. Here he comes. And it's a high end-over-end kick. It will be fielded at the six-yard line. Here come the Skyhawks across the 10, 15, 20, up the other sideline. Still on his feet. Finally runs out of bounds over there near the Point Pleasant bench. Carson Brenniger. And that is Brenniger on the return. So that will spot the ball at the Scott Looks like they're going to put it just inside the 30 at about the 29 and a half yard line. 3.43 to go in the first half. Skyhawks up by 41 points. Here come the Skyhawks out of the huddle. 
Braden Clark lines up wide to the near side. Fry from the gun. Fry takes it, drops back. Looking, he's going to keep it. He's going to run it up the middle. He's across the 30. He'll run it out of bounds at about the 31, 32-yard line. He'll pick up a yard, second nine now for the Skyhawks. Yeah, wisely he ran out of bounds there instead of trying to get up and uh, take a hit from the pursuer. Of yeah, the, he's had the enough hits tonight. But, uh, but he wisely that time, he just kind of took a little step to his right and got out of bounds. Looks like they gave him two yards. About the 31. Y yard and a half. Skyhawks will spread two receivers out to the near side. Fry from the gun, takes a snap, drops back, looking to the near side. Complete at the 35. Across the 40, he'll fall forward. On the catch is Carson Brenniger once again. And he will get enough yardage for the first down. They'll move the sticks and spot the ball at the Scott 41 yard line. Yeah, just a curl out there from Carson Brenniger. He goes and sets down right around the 35 yard line. And Matt Fry does a good job of getting him the ball. And he tries to use a block down here on the edge and is able to pick up that first down 11 yards on the carry on the catch. Dual receivers near side, wide out far side. Fry takes a snap, drops back, has trouble finding the handle, throws one to Hail Mary down the field. Isaiah Bush catches it as a 25. He's got some room. He's going into the end zone. Touchdown, Isaiah Bush on a 59-yard touchdown pass from Matt Fry. Yeah, tr trouble with the snap there from, from Matt Fry. Causes that to be a little bit late. It gives Bush enough time to outrun his his defender, but uh, because of it, the pass was a little bit underthrown as Fry had to get rid of it without really getting a drop uh, in his progression. And because of that, Bush kind of has to work back to the ball just a little bit. And as he's making that catch, the defender falls, trying to trying to knock that ball free. Cameron Green on to attempt the point after touchdown. Elkins will hold. The kick is away. Looks good from here. It is good. 2.59 showing on a first half clock. Skyhawks jump out to a 54-6 lead over the Point Pleasant Big Blacks. We'll keep it here with just under three minutes to go in the half. And I'm like uh, Garrett over here from Video Productions. Nobody expected to come to watch a blowout tonight. I really thought this was going to be a hard knock game, uh, tooth and nail, back and forth. But Well, to be completely honest with you, Joe, Point Pleasant's offense is totally different from what we thought it was going to be. We thought it was going to be a lot of under center wing T offense from what they've ran on the, in the past, and this has been a lot of shotgun. And because of that, that little bit of extra time, it's it's getting to get back to that line of scrimmage. Scott's got doing a really good job of getting uh, push up front and call and being really good disruptors of that run game. And and they've put Point Pleasant in the positions to be in you know, third and 10, third and 12, third and 14. And that's just not what Point Pleasant wants to be in. So therefore they're behind their eight ball. There's probably not very many plays in this offensive scheme to call on third and fourth down when it's when it's 10 yards plus plus and it's just it's taken point pleasant completely out of their game ron neal has it teed off to kick away from the scott 40 kicking from our right to left official signal they are ready neal checks his team they're ready here comes neal with the kick a high end over end kick it will be fielded at the 20 across the 25 side steps number four on the return he goes to the far side of the field and he will be brought down at the 40 and it looks like they will spot the ball at the 40 for the big blacks 40 yeah yep Mason Brown on the tackle I'm at the 40. The what's yeah, 40. That's what on the, the heck 40. Are they doing? Like, <laughs> those three different officials marking the ball <laughs> spot. And oh, well. We'll take the 40. 250 on a clock here in the second quarter. Here comes Point out of the huddle. He'll back in at quarterback from the gun. There goes a man in motion. Hands it off to a man coming to the near side. He's got a little room, a little spinning. Number 14 on the carry. That is Nathan Bentz once again. 
They will give him seven yards on the carry. It'll be second down and three. Ball up to the point 47 and a half yard line. They have to cross the 50 to get the first down. Wide receivers out each side of the field. Hand off up the middle. And the running back will be close to the first down. Number 37 on the carry, that is Brady Bowen once again. They're going to give him forward progress about the 49 and a half. He point. fell forward just enough to get the first down, barely. Clock rolling at 150. Play clock at 20. As you can see, Point Pleasant's in no hurry to try to get. Uh, I think they're just trying to burn they're up. They're just the trying clock. to get to halftime as quickly as possible. They'll send twin receivers far side of the field. Caden Hill from the gun. Takes a snap, hands it, fakes it. He's going to keep it. He is going to be, he breaks a tackle. He's got a little bit of forward motion. He's going to pick up about four yards on the carry. Looks like it's going to be second down at about six. Gain of four. Moves the ball down to the Scott 46 yard line. Here come the big black side of the huddle. Play clock, game clock under a minute. Play clock at 12, 17 and rolling. Man in motion. And nowhere for number 14, Nathan Bentz. This time stopped by a host of Skyhawk defenders. He's going to lose a couple. It's going to be third down and seven now for points. Point Pleasant taking their good old time. Matter of fact, they don't even have to snap the ball. They come out of the huddle. Game clock at 15 and rolling. They're going to try to get one play in, man in motion. And they're going to try to pass the ball. Hail Mary down the field. And it is way away from the intended receiver. That'll stop the clock with five seconds to go in the half. Brings up fourth down. Pass was not even close. Brings yeah, up fourth down. You can see the type of offense that points trying to run. I mean, that was that was pretty much a one receiver route down the field. And and the way Scott's expecting right now for you to take shots down the field, you're only sending one receiver deep. You know, Scott's able to kind of put three and four guys back there into that little spot and guard him. And it's going to take a perfect throw in order for, for that to, to, to drop in there. Here comes Point out of the huddle, wearing all white tonight. Skyhawks wearing gold, or gold pants, black jerseys. Point Pleasant set and ready. Caden Hill calling numbers. Drops back, wants to pass. He fires a pass. It's in and out of the hands of number 34. I mean, it was right in his hands, and he could not even hang on to it. That'll stop the clock with one second. And the turnover on downs goes to the Skyhawks. Turnover on downs. First down, Skyhawks. It was almost like he didn't want to catch that ball. I mean, it was right in his hands. So Skyhawk defense comes up strong once again, shuts down the offensive attack of the Big Blacks. I'd really like to see Scott just knee this and take it in the locker room. Skyhawks will take the snap. That's what they're going to do. Yeah, they're just going to snap it and down it. One second on the clock. Fry will take it and immediately put the knee on the ground. And that's the end of the first half of play. The Scott Skyhawks, 54. The Point Pleasant Big Blacks, six. We will take a two-minute break. We'll be back with the People's Bank Halftime Report after this. You're listening to Black and Gold Football on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Hey. Jake from State Farm. We have to know. Yeah, these are State Farm pajamas. No, what if we have to talk to somebody about our policy, but it's late at night? Call us 24-7. Great. 
Because what if someone still calls his mom for everything? We'll walk you through everything. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Oh, yeah, mom, everything's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, not my mom. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. At Miller Brothers Pharmacy, we are dedicated to providing outstanding personalized customer service at an affordable price. We are your one-stop shop for all your pharmacy and medical needs. Our staff has over 90 years of experience, so you can count on fast, personal attention. Our pharmacy is proud to offer delivery service for your convenience with free delivery for patients within Madison and Danville city limits. Contact a member of our team about delivery today. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.hanleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. As the Scott Skyhawks lead the Point Pleasant Big Blacks by a score of 54 to 6. Quickly, let's go uh, run down our scoring. Matt Fry on the first opening play connected 83 yards to Braden Clark for a touchdown and then come right back on a 67-yard connection to Carson Brenniger. Preston Cooper then ran one in. A Carson Brenniger had a pick six from 40 yards out. Preston Cooper ran a 25-yarder. Carson Brenniger ran a 81-yarder. Preston Cooper had a 38-yard. And Scott led 47 to nothing before Point Pleasant got on the board for the first time on a 61-yard by Nathan Bentz. He was actually filling in for quarterback. Then to end the half, Matt Fry connected to Isaiah Bush, 59 yards out. Scott will see this one, 54-6. to six. And Chris Barrett, I don't think anybody expected this kind of score here at the half. No, Joe, they didn't. Uh, like I said, I, I I thought Point Pleasant would come in here with a completely different type of offense, one that we had seen in years past, and it's been different. It's been a lot more shotgun, a lot more trying to run outside the tackles instead of inside the tackles, and then because of that, Scott's speed's able to, to really take advantage of um, uh, what Point Pleasant isn't able to do, which is seal the edge. I mean, like I said, we, we've talked about it uh, all week. We've talked about it all evening. Everybody really thought this was going to be a uh, back and forth hard grind football game and Scott just started uh, right on top in the, the get go on the first offensive play and they've uh, just made it shine uh, the entire night. Uh, Caden Hill got shaken up. Uh, Nathan Bentz come in at quarterback on a quarterback keeper, scored a touchdown on a 61 yard run but other than that it's been all Skyhawks here in the first half. It really has, and like we said, this is the difference between starting slow and, and not, not starting at all, to be honest with you. And uh, Scott's just come out, and they've, they've been ready to go from the get-go, and this is this is what happens when, when Scott's able to do what, they're, what they want to do. Yeah. Let's uh, quickly go back and talk about uh, tonight the to tonight. Um, Boone County's finest. 1972 Throw Scott football team is on hand man. tonight. They were uh, they got together and met last night, had a dinner. A lot of them got to catch up. And they were talking a lot of those guys have not seen each other in 51 years. Could you imagine seeing uh, guys you played and practiced with every day for, you know, 12 weeks and go 51 years before you see them again? No, really, really I've, I honestly couldn't, to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's crazy to think that. And um, it's one of those things to where um, you uh, – 
you just lose track, but right. you hope to stay in touch. And it's great that they were able to, to put this together for these guys to come here and see each other again. And and I know that you could tell just by on their faces they've they've had a great time, and and, and it's been a great thing for them. Yeah, some of these guys, you know, like I said, I mentioned when I introduced them in the beginning, a lot of these guys still live around in the area. Uh, but then a lot of them uh, have moved away, live in other states and so forth. Uh, you know, Dana Bell, the quarterback, uh, I, I've run into him from time to time. He lived down in Mingo County. Uh, some of these guys live local. And then, like I said, it, uh, you kind of lose track of a lot of these guys, but they have had a great time uh, catching up. We are going to go ahead and take a two-minute break. When we come back, we'll have the first segment with the executive director of the WVSSAC, David Price, interview after this. At the half, Scott leads Point Pleasant 54-6. to You're listening to Scout Sports Network on WZAC and Video Productions. For General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. In an ever-changing world, one thing you can always count on is Walker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Hurricane. You know, Gene and Ryan built their business the old-fashioned way by making friends. There are no gimmicks or games at Walker, just honest, fair deals, and their method is so straightforward, it may shock you. Friendly service and a huge selection of inventory with more arriving daily. When you're ready for your next vehicle, take the short 20-minute drive from Charleston or Huntington to Walker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, just off the hurricane exit of I-64. Walker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, making friends one deal at a time. Are you ready to unlock a future filled with remarkable pay, unbeatable benefits, and unparalleled satisfaction? Imagine embarking on a journey that offers you a college-level education without the weight of debt, all while earning a steady income. Look no further than the West Virginia Building and Construction Trades Apprenticeship Programs. Join us, and together, let's build a future that's brighter and stronger. Go to ACTWV.org to apply today. The West Virginia Building and Construction Trades, where the future is forged. Hi, it's Tony Caridi. You know, our West Virginia military veterans are the last ones to ask for handouts, yet many of them are hungry. I invite you to watch a video that shows an amazing monthly program that helps feed our veterans in Beckley and Clarksburg. Huntington Bank and other partners would like to expand this program to other areas of our state, and we'd love for you to help. Watch the video at wvenriched.com. That's wvenriched.com. WZAC FM, Danville, Madison. Welcome back to the People's Bank Halftime Report. Joining us now is the Executive Director of the WVSSAC, a gentleman that has a lot of ties to Boone County and, of course, uh, Scott High and Madison Middle, uh, David Price. And first, uh, Dave, thanks for joining us and taking time out of your uh, uh, busy schedule to talk to us here for a few minutes about I want to first of all I want to go into uh, your background in Boone County Schools you're a graduate of Sherman High School but uh, kind of take us from there and uh, into your college years and then into teaching and in, in Boone County Schools well I graduated in 1978 from Sherman High School attended Marshall University and graduated from Marshall and um, I was hired in Boone County as a teacher and a coach and started my teaching career at Madison Middle and my first year of coaching was with uh, Coach Bob Mollett and uh, Steve Bradley and Doug Cox, Tom Bice at uh, Van High School and then after that year came to Scott and coached with uh, Jim Booth and had the opportunity to coach football there with uh, Coach Booth, Coach Mollett and Coach Cox over the years and uh, coach baseball with Coach Nelson up until uh, 1998 so uh, you know spent a lot of time there. What did you learn from Bob Mullet? Because I was working at the Colgate News at the time when the previous coach was there. Bob Mullet come in. He turned that school and athletic program around 360 degrees. You know, one of the things I always talk about Coach Mullet was his ability to form relationships uh, with players, parents, and the community. And that's the one thing you take away, his dedication and commitment uh, uh, to not only the sport of football, but those student athletes that he served. And that's the way he always looked at it, that uh, he was serving them. So, they, you know, that's what I would take away from him. 
Uh, you grew up over on the Boone County, or on the Big Coal River side of the, the county. You ended up uh, being an as assistant principal at Sherman uh, Middle and Brookview there at one time, but then you kind of went on through the ranks. What made you kind of migrate over to the little Coal River side of the county? Well, you know, again, that's where um, jobs were available at the time. When those jobs became available at uh, Madison Middle and Scott, and um, you know, just again, formed relationships there, and it opportunities were there, and enjoyed it, and never wanted to uh, move as far as uh, teaching and coaching, and then. Uh, uh, took the turn and uh, some people say to the dark side on administration and uh, became assistant principal and served Sherman Elementary in Brookview at 50% of the day at each school and then became assistant principal at Madison Middle and then uh, was at Sherman uh, Junior High for uh, I guess uh, eight or ten years there so um, well, let's first of all, I want to go back to the academic side before we start talking sports, but do you remember anybody, any certain students in particular that kind of stick out in your mind that, that went on through school and, uh, you know, was successful in their education? Oh, there's so many of them, you know, when I, I look at the number of uh, students that, and that I hear from that uh, are uh, successful of the careers they chose, uh, whether it be that they've gone into the mining industry or whether they're doctors, attorneys, and teachers, they're just so many of them that uh, and I get to hear from them and what was funny was this year when uh, we announced our retirement uh, uh, the hundreds of uh, emails text messages phone calls uh, social media messages I received uh, it was great to hear from so many of them especially those former players what do, I mean what kind of satisfaction does it give you as a as an educator when students like that reach back out to you after all these years? Well, I think that so many people don't realize that as an educator, you never know the impact you have on students and those that you've served uh, over those years. But I think you have to keep in the back of your mind as a student, the impact that teachers and coaches had on you. And uh, when you think about that, and uh, it's little things that you say or do that really make a difference, and they'll remind you of something that you may may know or may not know what they're talking about, but it really affected them. And um, when they say that, and they come back 20 years later, and they're, they're talking about it, and thank you, uh, then you know why you did what you did. You kind of advanced your career. You went to the West Virginia uh, Department of Education for what three years. Then you ended up in Raleigh County of all places. How did that all happen? Well, again, the opportunities, you know, like I said, the good Lord's been good to David Price without question. Um, and doors open when you least expect it, when you're not looking for them. And uh, I was approached about being the uh, assistant superintendent of Raleigh County and uh, decided that I would do that. And once I got there, after a couple of years, had the opportunity to, to become superintendent and stayed there for uh, the next nine. So, you know, it, it, it was never a goal to uh, be in Raleigh County for 11 years and serve as assistant superintendent and superintendent, but that's how it ended up. And uh, like I said, I was very blessed. What kind of relationships did you make while you were in Raleigh County? I know you and I were talking before we uh, started recording that, you know, there was some, some new schools, new buildings uh, and facilities built while under your administration, but kind of walk us through how all that happens and how you actually ended up being the superintendent. Well, and again, it was one of those things when the superintendent that I was serving under as assistant superintendent left, uh, vacancy uh, was there. and. Uh, we uh, applied for it and fortunate enough to uh, get it. Uh, at the same time, had a great board working there. We had a common uh, vision, common goals about some of the things that needed to be done in our school system. And, um, you know, we uh, had some very small schools that ended up, we have in elementary, we had to consolidate, but uh, ended up being able to build some beautiful elementaries that will serve uh, students in Raleigh County for years to come, a lot of renovations to high schools and athletic facilities as well. Um, during that period of time, we uh, completed over $130 million worth of uh, renovations for the students there. And uh, But on top of that, uh, we had several National Blue Ribbon schools um, recognized for their academic achievement. Uh, a lot of uh, leaders in technology where they were recognized as Apple schools and with their success. So, you know, we're very proud of the total program we had in place there. And actually, even with athletics, I know we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, my last year, we had the Gatorade uh, Volleyball Player of the Year and Gatorade 
football player of the year um, for West Virginia, and um, basketball player, uh, male basketball player, finished second in the Gatorade voting. So we had uh, a great run there in our schools, and it just I think it speaks uh, volumes for the well-rounded education we were able to offer in Raleigh County. You know, athletics in Raleigh County has been, you know, to the forefront for many years. But I do want to back up and ask you one question. You're talking about having to close a school. How tough is that with, as an administrator when you got to tell people because of economics or whatever the reason, you're having to merge their school in with another school? Well, you know, nothing's ever easy, but change is always there. The one thing that we always talk about is the one thing that will never change is there will always be change. Uh, consolidation of schools is nothing new. It's something that's always taken place uh, in the history of our state. And um, but it's never easy. I will say it seems to be a little bit uh, smoother when you're closing elementaries than it does high schools, you know. And um, but at the same time, it's not easy. So you've got to make sure that you involve your stakeholders, involve communities, involve parents. What is it they want to see in a school to make sure that they understand that whatever we're doing is to better serve kids and offer and give them a better opportunity to. Um, receive a well-rounded education with not just uh, three R's, if you will, will, but what do kids need to know now to be able to survive and be able to be successful in this uh, new technological world in the 21st century. Today we're going to take a break. We'll come back and we'll talk a little sports and we'll talk about a little bit about the WVSSAC. We're talking to David Price, the executive director at the SSAC office in Parkersburg. We'll be back with more on our People's Bank halftime report after this. You're lifting to Scott Skalk football on WZAC and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Relationships in life are more important than the one between you and your Michelin tires. Rugged, long-lasting Michelin truck tires. Michelin, a better way forward. Little General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. The Southern Pineapple in downtown Madison is your choice for women's clothing and accessories. They have styles that fit all ages, along with local handmade jewelry. From elegant to everyday wear, the Southern Pineapple is your place to shop. Find us on Facebook, subscribe to our page, so you can see all the latest products and inventory. Come and shop at our unique boutique and be sweet. WZAC 92.5 FM Danville, Madison. And now back to more black and gold football action. Here is the voice of the Skyhawks, Joe Linville. Thank you very much. We are at the half where the Scott Skyhawks lead the Point Pleasant Big Blacks by a score of 54 to 6. And Chris, you got some numbers for us in the first half? Yes. Four Point Pleasant, they ran 32 plays for 75 yards, 14 01 time of possession. Um, Caden Hill, uh, 0 of 11 for 0 yards, 3 interceptions. Uh, Nathan Brentz, Bentz, sorry, Bentz. 5 carries for 77 yards and the touchdown for Scott. 25 plays, 446 yards of total offense. How much? 446 yards Good of total great. offense. Uh, Matt Fry, 8 of 12 for 351 yards, 4 touchdowns. Uh, Preston Cooper, five carries for 68 yards, three touchdowns. Brenniger chips in three carries for 43 yards. <coughs> for the receiving end, 
Carson Brenner, five catches, 179 yards, two touchdowns. Isaiah Bush, two catches for 89 yards, a touchdown. And Braden Clark, one catch for 83 yards and a touchdown. All right, what numbers for, and that was just a half. That's the first half of tonight's ball game. Scouts lead at 54 to 6. Quickly want to go back and talk a little bit about this uh, 1972 team that's in town tonight. Uh, of course, we had to make a pit stop there at the half. Ran down, ran into Donnie Weaver, and he said his brother Greg and uh, uh, Doug both were listening in tonight. So uh, Doug and I are about the same age, so I haven't seen him forever. But, uh, again, we'd like to thank everyone listening in on the World Wide uh, Web tonight, uh, watching uh, and listening to our game broadcast. So time has expired here at the half as the Skyhawks uh, have made their way back out to the field. Uh, go ahead. Real quick, I want to give a special shout-out, and it, it – reminded me once we went down and then took our little break at halftime <laughs> I seen him but I want to give a big shout out to one of my former players one of my favorite kids that I've, I've ever coached uh, Alex Epling he uh, mm. got engaged not oh, too long ago wow. and it is too and the reason why I want to bring it up now is because it is actually to Eric McClung's daughter Duck Carly Dosey Oh, I so, seen that on so, the um, the other day on Facebook, but didn't put two and two together. I, I, I hated him when he played for me, but I absolutely <laughs> love him since he left. But now he's all, he's honestly one of my all time favorite kids. Um, he he was always right there by my side, wanting to 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 do something to help the program, and, and was always wanting to get better. And he pitched in a lot, a lot of big baseball games for us his senior year. So uh, big big shout out to him and uh, congratulations, Alex. All right, they put a couple minutes back on here, so let's go ahead and get our commercials in. We'll take a quick two minute break and we'll be back with the second half kickoff after this. The score at the half, the Scott Scouts 54, the Point Pleasant Big Blacks 6. You're listening to Scott Scout Football on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.handleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. The Southern Pineapple in downtown Madison is your choice for women's clothing and accessories. They have styles that fit all ages, along with local handmade jewelry. From elegant to everyday wear, the Southern Pineapple is your place to shop. Find us on Facebook, subscribe to our page, so you can see all the latest products and inventory. Come and shop at our unique boutique and be sweet. At Miller Brothers Pharmacy, we are dedicated to providing outstanding personalized customer service at an affordable price. We are your one-stop shop for all your pharmacy and medical needs. Our staff has over 90 years of experience, so you can count on fast, personal attention. Our pharmacy is proud to offer delivery service for your convenience with free delivery for patients within Madison and Danville city limits. Contact a member of our team about delivery today. has been a part of our community for over 55 years. WZAC-FM, Danville, Madison. Welcome back to Scout Field. We are ready to get quarter number three underway. Ron Neal has it teed up to kick away for the Scott Skyhawks. Eight minutes on the clock. And looks like we're going to let it run here in the second half. Skyhawks have put this one away. Ron Neal is now ready. Here comes Neal's kick. It's a end over end kick on the ground, picked up to 32. And on the return, he don't go very far up to the 39. Looks like they're gonna give him a really good spot at the 40. Let's see, they've not 
spotted it as of yet, but they're going to give him a spot on the 40-yard line. Uh, it was number six, which is Parker Bowles, was the one on the kick return. Big Blacks come out of the huddle. Looks like a lot of new jerseys on the field for the Skyhawks. See Caden Sharps and Ryan Neal and Caden Hill calling signals for point man in motion. Quarterback keeps it and it's going to be Caden Hill. He's going to have close to 10 yards, maybe nine is where they'll spot it. It'll be second down and one. Somebody asked me at half how long Dolan would leave the first team in there. I said, I couldn't tell you. But I'm like you, there's an awful lot of clean jerseys out there on the field right now. Second and one, four point. They bring it out of the huddle. Wide receivers each side of the field. Caden Hill, the quarterback from the gun. They'll go I formation. Man in motion. Hands it off to the lone running back in the back. And it's going to be number 37, Bowens. He's going to pick up the first down and about 10 more as he'll carry it down to the Scott 40. First down, Point Pleasant. They'll come out of the huddle. Dawson Rollins will line up wide to the near side for Point. Caden Hill from the gun. Got a man in motion. Hill will keep it, goes up the middle. Nobody even pursuing him. Uh, he'll have another first down as he goes inside the 30 down to about the 29-yard line. They'll move the sticks. Ryan Neal on the tackle for the Skyhawks. First down point. Man in motion. Hands it off to number 44 coming out of the backfield. He's got some room. He will go inside the 20 for another Point Pleasant first down. Ethan Jordan is the uh, ball carrier for Point Pleasant. Looks like they are going to spot the ball at about the 15-yard line. So about a 14-yard pickup for him. It's going to be first and 10 at the Scott 15. Caden Hill calls numbers. And now they change the play up. Looks like a Madden play flip. Yeah, I mean, both receivers on each side of the field quickly hands it off to number 27 in the backfield. He'll go inside the 10 down to about the 7. On the stop there for Scott, looks like it is going to be number 11, Caden Sharps, will make the initial stop. Ball spotted about the seven. Yeah, it looks like second down and a short two. Got to get just down to about the five for a first down. Hill from the gun calling the numbers. Man in motion. Hands it off on a cross sweep. Number 44 will walk into the end zone. That will be Ethan Jordan on the touchdown. Yeah, that time they just used the, the formation that they've been kind of uh, hammering all, all evening. Uh, they sent uh, Bents in motion uh, around the side. Looked like they were going to do that swing pass. And then finally they just handed the ball off to the, uh, the running back, Jordan. And he's able to kind of just get into the end zone fairly easily. They will kick the extra point. The ball is down. The kick is away all the way to the baseball field fence. And it will be 54-13 in front of the I tried to Scott tell you that Crowell. kid has a heck of a leg. He does. <laughs> I thought he was going to go over to baseball field. Quickly, let's catch up on some scores. It is number in class single A. Number 16, Cameron, leads Magnolia 38 to 6. Over in double A, number 9, Lincoln, leads Nicholas County 17 16. North Marion leads Brook 28 to 6. 
Liberty Westfield Harrison leads number two, Philip Barber, 21-20. Weir leads Frankfort, 35-21. Roan County leads Lewis County, 28-0. Winfield leads Wayne, 26-21. That game in the fourth quarter. Chapmanville leads Nitro in the fourth quarter, 36-28. So a lot of close games in the Cardinal Conference. Herbert Hoover leads number 15, Hedgesville in AAA, 41-15, that game in the fourth quarter. Sherman leads Liberty Raleigh, 16-6, that game in the third. Here comes the kick from point. <laughs> it is going to go out of the back of the end zone. So Scott will take the touchback and bring it out to start the drive. Van trails Tulsa 46 to 8. That game in the third quarter. Points kickoff goes through the end zone. So I thought Van might have had a shot at Tulsa, but Tulsa's turned it on tonight. Ball now, comes up now to, to try to keep up with these uh, new jerseys numbers. on the offense. Yeah. I do know Peanut Brown and uh, Ryan Neal will be the quarterback in the running back. Oh, yeah. Brown uh, from the gun. Takes a snap, hands it off to Neal. Flag on the play. That will be a motion call against Scott. That'll cost him five yards. So back him up. First down 15 for the Skyhawks. Ball at their own 15-yard line. Jeremiah Brown, the peanut, that quarterback, takes a snap, hands it off to Neal. Neal was caught in the backfield. He will get down for a loss. Of about five. Uh, about six. Uh, well, actually, we want to spot it at the four or 11, so loss of four. Second down 14, second down 19. Second down 19. Game clock at 410 in the third on a running clock. Brown goes from the gun. Second down for the Skyhawks. Fakes the hand. Oh, he hands it off to Neal. No, actually hand off to number 12 for the Skyhawks. That is Caden Sutphin. And Scott will lose about four more. <laughs> yeah. They move it back a little farther. And they're going to spot the ball at the six yard Eight line. On the Loss on the play Third and mile for Scott. Scott huh? Third and 29. Wow. But that's our second team playing their first team. Third 24, so. I'm sorry. Third and 24. Okay. Brown from the gun picks it up. And he's going to keep it. They're going to tackle him at the five. And he's going to lose a couple more. Fourth down. On a running clock, 245 to go in the third. Skyhawks lead this one 54-13. This is always a tricky punting situation, especially with your second team in there. Because yes, it is. The, you're either going to be with your heels on the boundary back there, and you've got to hope that the snap don't go high. David Fennessy back to punt for Scott, standing in the back of his end zone. He's got the snap, kicks it away. It's a high, and there must be a flag on the play. I believe they're probably going to get Scott on uh, false start. <laughs> Gee whiz. So be snapping it from about the uh, three-yard line now, two-and-a-half-yard line. Fantasy can't go back much more. He was already pretty back. 
pretty well back in the back of the end zone. Penalty is half the distance. Motion against Scott. Fennessey will back up about a step and a half, and that's all he can get. Snap is good. Fennessey gets a high end over end kick. And that's what we'll say. Hopefully it'll get a Scott bounce, it and it not. doesn't. <laughs> it does not. It gets a point bounce. Yeah, yeah 10 yard punt. <laughs> not good. Clock stops at 2.03 to go in the third. Ball is spotted at the. Hey, they gave us the yard, 11 yard. Oh, points. all right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the ball is spotted at the. 13. No, it's about more like 14. Caden Hill still in the game at quarterback. Man in motion. Hill pitches it out to the near side. And they will get him as he crosses inside the 10-yard line. Jax McCarty making the initial stop for Scott. Jax McCarty with the tackle. Ball down to outside the eight. Second down and five. And the keeper, number 44, goes into the end zone for a point. That is Ethan Jordan once again. And he was at the eight. eight. So a seven-yard run and an eight-yard run. And Shroon will come on to attempt the extra point. Balls down. The kick is, I just wait to see if it goes, eh, not quite to the foot baseball field, but pretty close. Extra point, good. So Scott now leads 54-20. So both teams will come back up the field. Now you kind of have to wonder how long points going to keep their first team offense and defense yeah, on, it, in the game. Yeah, you know, it, it's kind of sad. You know, you're trying to give your second team uh, a little, you know, a little time on the field, get a little experience, and then. I, I agree with point put leaving them in for this long, but I think now it's probably time. You put a couple touchdowns on the board. Now let's. Uh, yeah, they got first-team returners back in. I see Bush on the field. I see Brenniger back there. Braden. Isaiah Bush is up here. Yeah. Fantasy's it looks like they the still middle. got their first team in the game. Alex Schrader has it teed up at the 40. See if they get a little pop kick right here. And it's, it's a it kick. It will go into the end zone. Scott will get away from it, and they'll put it in play. Again, first and 10 at their own 20. So let's see what happens here. And Scott's sending first team back. I don't blame them. I don't blame them. They want to play games. We can play games with them. Gave him the opportunity. So Matt Fry back into the lineup at quarterback. He will go from the gun. Preston Cooper to his left. Matt Fry takes it, drops back. Looking, fires one down the way. It's overthrown, intended for Braden Clark. Incomplete, second down. Yeah, just a little too high there for Braden Clark. He had a step He's on He's probably his cold. He's been on, standing yeah. on the sideline for a few minutes. 
Skyhawks hits the road again next Friday night. We go to Chapmanville. I've already been in touch with Mr. Wonderful. Barker to get us a spot in the press. Yeah, I'll tell you more about that story later. Here we go. Matt Fry takes a snap, drops back quickly. Complete to Brenniger. Brenniger to this side across the 25, 30. Still on. He finally ran out of bounds at the 32 yard line. Anyway, I. I called the AD last week to let them know a week and a half, two, almost two weeks ahead of time, we would be there. And then they start giving you all these excuses why they may not have room for you. I said, I don't want to hear it. Build a bigger press box. Yeah, exactly. Well, they did last year, and they still, well, they bring, uh, you know, all their cronies in. Here we go. Scott is ready to go. Fry from the gun. Brenniger in motion. Pass to Brenniger complete. Out there wide open across the 30, 35. Still on his feet, 40, breaks it. He's at the 50. He's got a running room. He's at the 30. Still on his feet. They sandwich him down at the point 30-yard line to bring him down. But another big play for Matt Fry and Carson Brannigan. Looks like they're going to spot the ball about the 19-yard line. 19-yard line. Actually, more like the 18. Scott is set and ready to go. Matt Fry from the gun. Fry drops back, and Fry will run it. He goes right, throws it down the field, incomplete, intended across the way for Jax McCarty, incomplete. Stops the clock with 39 seconds to go in the third. That game next Friday night at Chapmanville is at 7 o'clock, so we'll be on the air I at like, 6.30. I like those 7 o'clock kick I do, do, too. Fry drops back quickly, complete to the near side. around the And it's Carson Brenniger is Having just down. short of a yard, two yards yeah, short. But Scott will have it first and goal at the point two yard line. It'll mark it, line up on the near hash. Scott is set and ready. Fry goes under center. Fry keeps it. He's in the end zone for the touchdown. Two-yard touchdown run by Matt Fry. And it looks like they are going to go with, this time, the Skyhawks are going to go with Tucker, Tucker Brela on the kick. Ball's back, ball down, kick is away, and it is good. And the Scott Skyhawks jump out to a 61-20 lead over Point Pleasant. We'll step aside for a one-minute break here on the Skyhawk Sports Network. Barker's Hardware is your one-stop shop. Short drive to Danville and come see us where the Make the Summer Sales event is in full swing at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. We've got savings on all models, including up to $14,000 below MSRP on the 2023 Ram Limiteds and 15% off MSRP on the 2023 Jeep Compasses. And the new 2024 Wranglers are awesome and arriving daily. So come see us for the Make the Summer Sales event at Stevens Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Route 119 in Danville. At Hanley Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute. Whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.handleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley family of business thanks you for your support. 17 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Ron Neal will tee it up and kick it away from right to left for the Skyhawks. And here comes the kick. It's on the ground. It's a fumble. It's still loose. Finally, point falls on it at the 43-yard line. Let's 
So that's where the Big Blacks will put it in play first and 10. And it looks like our first team defense back on the field. Can't blame them. They, they want to play games. We'll play games with them. Here come the Big Blacks. Caden Hill still calling signals. Three receivers far side, single wide out to the near side. Hill takes it, fakes the handoff. Neil, or Caden Hill up the middle. He will pick up maybe two. Actually, he'll pick up one, second down and nine. And that will be the end of the third quarter of play. We'll step aside for a one-minute break. Scott leads this one 61-20 here on the Skyhawk Sports Network. Hey. Jake from State Farm. We have to know. Yeah, these are State Farm pajamas. No, what if we have to talk to somebody about our policy, but it's late at night? Call us 24-7. Great. Because what if someone still calls his mom for everything? We'll walk you through everything. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Yeah, Mom, everything's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, not my mom. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. The Tint Guy has big news. The newest location is now open in Barbersville. Voted best in the Valley since 2020. Getting your windows tinted is now twice as easy. Go to the best, The Tint Guy. Hey, Tint Guy here. Come see us at our new location in Barbersville. Field where the Point Pleasant Big Blacks have the ball. Second down and nine. The ball at the, their own 43 yard line. Hill calling signals, drops back, wants to pass, fires one down to the near side. It is going to be thrown out of bounds. Intended for number 27, Dawson Rollins. Comes up way short, incomplete. Third down now for the Big Blacks. Yeah, the first time we've really seen them try to go down the field like, like that. And, uh, like we've had a couple times. That <laughs> pass is nowhere near where it was supposed to be. Here come the big black side of the huddle. They are set and ready. Heel from the gun. Three wideouts far side. He drops back, wants to pass. Fires one across the way. It's complete, and it's short of the first down. Nice job over there by Scotts. He's sideways on me. I can't see a number. Number 12 for Scott over there making heck of the Caden something. Oh, I can't believe it. He was over a yard short. Yes, he was a yard short. They give him the first down. Caden something with a heck of a hit over there. First and 10 point, 627 on a rolling clock. Handed in motion, coming to the near side, and they are going to stop him at the Scott 46 yard line. Gain of two on the play. Anthony Marrero on the carry, and David Fennessy may coming up and making a really good open field tackle. You know, we've kind of I don't know what you say, maybe cut fantasy a little short first couple of games because he's had some outstanding defensive efforts, and no doubt that young man will be our player of the game before the season is out. Second down and eight, four point. They'll come out of the huddle. Ball at the Scott 46 yard line. Mr. Cart down leading, cheering. Handoff and hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll fall forward for a yard. Is points number 44. That is Ethan Jordan again. Gain of a yard. Third down and seven. Daniel Holstein on the tackle. Daniel Holstein makes the stop for Scott. 
Game clock rolling at 5.02. Third down seven, four point. Caden Hill calling the numbers. Quickly throws one across the middle, and it's through the hands of number 34. Did we ever determine number 34? He is not on our roster. 34 is their tight end, and it is Josh Chapman. Mm, pass incomplete. Fourth down now, four point. Just got a text from Andrew. Said he picked David Fennessey as the player of the game, first game of the season. Fourth down, four point. They are going for it. Fourth and seven. Man in motion. Pitch out to the man going around the far side of the field. He is going to be stopped short unless they give him another generous spot. And it looks like they're going to spot it at the Scott 40-yard line. It will be turned over to the Skyhawks. Scott has it first and 10, ball at their own 40. Matt Fry from the gun. Comes Brenniger in motion. Hand off to Carson Bre Co or Preston Cooper up the middle. And Cooper will pick up three on the carry, second down and seven. <clears throat> Scouts come out of the huddle. Hand it off to Cooper coming to the near side. Turns up across the 45. Still on his feet. He'll fall forward for a couple more. They'll get him up to the Scott 47 yard line. Preston Cooper on the carry again. Brings up third down and about three. Clock rolling at 2.25 to go. Third down, plenty of time on the play clock. Play clock at 10, game clock at 2.03. Fry ready from the gun. Hand off to Preston Cooper. Preston, and he breaks one. He's at the 50, 40, 30, 20. He's at the 10. He is going to outrun his way into the end zone for a 53-yard touchdown run. Preston Cooper. Fifty-three yards with 148 showing on a fourth quarter clock. And Preston Cooper with another outstanding effort on the ground as Tucker Brelove will come on and attempt to kick the extra point. Scott leads this one 67 to 20. <clears throat> Cole Wilkins, the holder. Snap is back, kick is away, and it looks good from here, and it is good as the Scott Skyhawks jump out to a 68-20 lead over the Point Pleasant Big Blacks. We'll take a one-minute break here on the Skyhawk Sports Network. At Boone Memorial Health, we're proving that a rural health system can provide advanced care. Working in collaboration with Marshall Orthopedics' highly respected program, we're making orthopedic as mayor of Huntington, there's three things I promise everyone. A 20-year, 200,000-mile warranty, free maintenance, and the best price right up front with friends and family pricing. Dutch Miller Hyundai in Huntington. I mean, Huntington is the place to get deals like 0% financing on Elantras, Konas, and Santa Fe's. Or drive this venue for as low as $199 a month. No, 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 no. It's Huntington. 
It's going to be the biggest thing since Santa Fe, maybe even Tucson. Sports Network. Ryan Neal has it teed up, ready to go again from our left to right. And here comes the kick on the ground. It's a loose ball and it's fell on as one of the defenders deflected it. And looks like Mingo or uh, Point Pleasant will take it at their own 46 yard line. And that's where they'll put it in play first and 10. 147 showing on the game clock here in the fourth quarter. Skyhawks lead this one 68-20. Point scoring two of their touchdowns against the second team defense here late in the ball game. Here comes the big blacks out of the huddle. Single wide out receivers both sides of the field. Caden Hill from the gun. Hill hands it off up the middle. And they will stop him inside at the 49-yard line. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's Game clock now rolling. Spots it at the 49, second and seven. Big blacks out of the huddle. Once again, they'll go single wideouts. Single running back and a flanker. Hill takes it, hands it off up the middle, and he will cross the 50 down to the Scott 48-yard line. Game clock under 30. Scott, doesn't, or Point, doesn't even have to snap the ball. Well, yeah, they'll have to snap it because the play clock's at 25, game clock's at 20. Point will come up and they don't even have to snap it. They're gonna let, uh, actually they're gonna run one more play. They go around the outside, trying to make something happen and they will, get tackled and that'll be the end of the ball game as Point Pleasant falls tonight to the Scott Scouts by a score of 68 to 20. Big game, big win tonight for the number two Scott Scouts. We'll step aside for a two minute break and then hopefully we'll catch up with Coach Dolan with Chris Barrett down on the field. You're listening to Scott Scout Football on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. in life are more important than the one between you and your Michelin tires. Rugged, long-lasting Michelin truck tires. Michelin, a better way forward. Little General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. Here at Thornhill, our goal is to provide you with the best automotive experience. From our state-of-the-art facilities, amenities, and certified staff, we call family. You'll be offered the best experience you deserve. We take pride in our focus for customer care, bringing the best quality and support for all of our customers' needs. What are you waiting for? It's your time to get behind the wheel with Thornhill. Get started now at thornhillautomotive.com. Just tag it at Thornhill, where it's all here for you. US 119 Chapmanville and Logan, WV to Belfry, Kentucky. The Southern Pineapple in downtown Madison is your choice for women's clothing and accessories. 
they have styles that fit all ages along with local handmade jewelry. From elegant to everyday wear, the Southern Pineapple is your place to shop. Find us on Facebook, subscribe to our page, so you can see all the latest products and inventory. Come and shop at our unique boutique and be sweet. WZAC-FM, Danville, Madison. Welcome back to Scott Field, where tonight the Scott Scouts knocked off the Point Pleasant Big Blacks 68-20. to And now let's go down to the field with the head coach of the Scott Scouts, Jeremy Dolan. Okay, for some reason we're not getting any signal from down on the field. Man, I hate that because I'm sure we – uh, we can get a good interview out of the coach tonight, but for uh, some reason uh, we are not getting any signal uh, from the field. So uh, anyway, hopefully we'll uh, catch him next time. Something's not right, but we'll talk to Barrett here in a minute. Let's go ahead and take another two-minute break, and we'll come back, and we'll go into our McDonald's postgame show after this. Final score tonight. Scott Skyhawks knock off Point Pleasant by a score of 68 to 20. You're listening to Scott Skyhawk Sports on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. General Stores has been serving West Virginia communities for almost five decades. That's nearly 50 years of providing those essential needs for your daily journey. We are so grateful to be a small part of your lives, and we want to recognize the integral part of our operation, the LG family. We know these last couple years haven't been easy, but with every sunrise and sunset, you keep us going. To the LG family, the moms, dads, sisters, brothers, sons, and daughters of West Virginia, thank you. In an ever-changing world, one thing you can always count on is Walker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Hurricane. You know, Gene and Ryan built their business the old-fashioned way by making friends. There are no gimmicks or games at Walker, just honest, fair deals, and their method is so straightforward, it may shock you. Friendly service and a huge selection of inventory with more arriving daily. When you're ready for your next vehicle, take the short 20-minute drive from Charleston or Huntington to Walker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, just off the Hurricane exit of I-64. Walker Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram, making friends one deal at a time. Are you ready to unlock a future filled with remarkable pay, unbeatable benefits, and unparalleled satisfaction? Imagine embarking on a journey that offers you a college-level education without the weight of debt, all while earning a steady income. Look no further than the West Virginia Building and Construction Trades Apprenticeship Programs. Join us, and together, let's build a future that's brighter and stronger. Go to ACTWV.org to apply today. The West Virginia Building and Construction Trades, where the future is forged. Hi, it's Tony Caridi. You know, our West Virginia military veterans are the last ones to ask for handouts, yet many of them are hungry. I invite you to watch a video that shows an amazing monthly program that helps feed our veterans in Beckley and Clarksburg. Huntington Bank and other partners would like to expand this program to other areas of our state, and we'd love for you to help. Watch the video at wvenriched.com. That's wvenriched.com. ACFM, Danville, Madison. It'll break the spirit a little bit sometimes as well. So, uh, Last question. This is kind of like coach to coach. Was it a little bit of a statement putting your uh, first teamers back in there after they kind of tried to pick on your two second teamers? Yeah. I know you probably can't be as candid as what you want to, but. Well, no, it's a little aggravating when someone, you know, I'm, I'm told by the officials that they're asking to play eight-minute quarters, which I'm willing to agree to. You know, my my thoughts and feelings on it at that point was that we're trying to get our starters off the field, get them home, get, you know, get everybody healthy. Game's pretty much over. So when you don't sub and you see that we've subbed and I felt like we needed to make a little bit of a statement. But the other thing a lot of people don't realize is the game went to 54-20. If we're not up 35 or more going into the fourth quarter, the clock don't roll. And I wanted the clock to roll. So it was just as much strategic as it was to make a point but the rest of the game was yeah we're not gonna let you score the rest of the game or or you know and so it's just it's one of those things and i just like to add one other thing chris before we go um tonight was the 20th win uh, of our coaching staff since we've been here in the last three years so i want to give uh, coach brenniger the game ball for that 20th win so well thank you, so, thank you. all right congratulations both of you let's keep it rolling next week back to you joe 
All right. Thank you very much, Chris Barrett. Finally, our equipment started working there right at the end as uh, Chris Barrett was talking to uh, head coach Jeremy Dolan down on the field. Now, let's take a uh, recap. Take a look at the recap of tonight's ball game scoring wise. Scott, on the opening play of the game, scrambled 83 yards on a pass play from Matt Fry to Braden Clark. Uh, the extra point failed. Scott jumped out to a 6 0 lead. Then it was Matt Fry connecting to Carson Brenniger. 67 yards out. Green, come on, kick the extra point. Scott jumped to a 13-0 lead. Then Preston Cooper scored in the first quarter with on a two-yard run. Uh, Green kicked the extra point. Scott jumped out 20 to nothing for the Skyhawks. Then Carson Brenniger had a pick six and ran up 40 yards into the end zone. Once again, Cameron Green, come on, kick the extra point. Scott led to 27 to nothing. It was Preston Cooper once again on a 25-yard jolt, and Green extra point failed. Scott led 33 to nothing. Carson Brenniger then scored on an 81-yard run play. <clears throat> Green, come on, kick the extra point. Scott led 40 to nothing. That was with seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Then Preston Cooper added another touchdown, 38 yards out with the extra point good from Green, 47 nothing. Preston Cooper, uh, actually, then Nathan Bent, 47 nothing on the 38 yard Preston Cooper run. Then Nathan Bentz, filling in a quarterback, uh, ran 61 yards for points, first touchdown. Scott led 47 6. Then at the half, Matt Fry connected to Isaiah Bush, 59 yards. The extra point was good for Scott, and Scott went into the locker room with a 54 to 6 halftime lead. In the third quarter, on a rolling clock, Point scored a couple touchdowns, both of them by Ethan Jordan from seven yards and eight yards out. The uh, extra points were good. Scott then led 54-20. Well, Matt Fry wasn't done. He scored on a two-yard run by uh, and then Breelove, come on, kick the extra point. Scott led 61-20. But then Preston Cooper broke loose 53 yards out. Scored Scott's final touchdown, Tucker Breelove's kick, uh, and Scott led 68-20. to We'll step aside, take a quick two-minute break, and we'll be back with our McDonald's player of the game after this. You're listening to Scott Skyhawk Football on WZAC Video Productions and the Skyhawk Sports Network. Hey. Jake from State Farm. We have to know. Yeah. These are State Farm pajamas. No, what if we have to talk to somebody about our policy, but it's late at night? Call us 24-7. Great, because what if someone still calls his mom for everything? We'll walk you through everything. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Oh, yeah, mom, everything's great. Yeah. I mean, uh, not my mom. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or click to get a quote today. At Miller Brothers Pharmacy, we are dedicated to providing outstanding personalized customer service at an affordable price. We are your one-stop shop for all your pharmacy and medical needs. Our staff has over 90 years of experience, so you can count on fast, personal attention. Our pharmacy is proud to offer delivery service for your convenience with free delivery for patients within Madison and Danville city limits. Contact a member of our team about delivery today. Funeral Home, we offer unique opportunities for families to create healing moments after loss. With over 55 years of experience serving the Boone, Logan, and Lincoln communities, our staff will help you discover ways to pay tribute, whether that be at a burial service at one of our cemeteries or a personalized lasting memorial. Visit us at www.handleyfh.com or call 304-369-0718. The Handley Family of Business thanks you for your support. Sixty-eight to twenty, and uh, number one, Fairmont Senior went down tonight to Bridgeport, forty to twenty. So the Skyhawks uh, 
should be uh, ranked number one in the power rankings in the coming week. We've got to do our McDonald's player of the game. And, Chris, I'll give you the first nomination. Well, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll save the obvious one for you, Joe. Okay. Um, I'll give uh, my nomination to Preston Cooper. He had eight carries for 128 yards and four touchdowns on night. He had a, an outstanding game on the ground. Quietly overlooked, yeah, I should say. Yeah, exactly. Until I seen the stats, I had no clue. Of course, I know he scored, uh, uh, let's see, what, three touchdowns tonight as well. I've got to give my nomination to Carson Brenniger. That young man in the first half was all over the field. Uh, he caught a uh, – uh, you know, passes, touchdowns, and uh, you'll have to give these numbers there because you've got the stats. So, Yeah. Um, we'll start off with team stats um, for Scott. 37 plays, 574 yards of total offense, 17 first downs on the night. Uh, individually, you had uh, Matt Fry was 11 of 17 for 429 yards, four touchdowns. Preston Cooper, as we said, eight carries for 128 yards, four touchdowns. Carson Brenniger, three carries for 43 yards. Receiving on the night, Carson Brenniger, eight catches, 257 yards, two touchdowns. That puts him over 300 yards of uh, total offense tonight. He had two touchdowns through the air. Isaiah Bush, uh, two catches for 89 yards, a touchdown. And Braden Clark, one catch for 83 yards and a touchdown. Defensively, uh, Carson Brenner with the three interceptions. And for point, they had um, 45 plays for 176 yards of total offense. They were uh, led on the night for by passing. Uh, Caden Hill was actually one of 14 for nine yards, had three interceptions. And on the ground, it was Nathan Bentz, five carries for 77 yards and a touchdown, and Ethan Jordan, four carries for 30 yards and two touchdowns. So that will wrap up our stats tonight, our McDonald's player of the game, uh, Carson Brenniger and Preston Cooper. That's pretty much going to wrap up our coverage for tonight. Skyhawks in a big win over Point Pleasant, 68-20. Uh, would like to thank Garrett Lester and Cade Berger from, did I say that right? Burgess, I'm sorry, from Video Productions. Of course, uh, uh, Missy Green, our studio engineer at uh, WZAC. Chris Barrett, good to have you back uh, once again tonight, my friend. But what a ball game. I think we saw a game tonight that nobody was expecting. Everybody thought it was going to be a hard-fought game on the field, but the Skyhawks just come out and showed, well, how explosive this team can be. We'll be on the air next Friday night from Chapmanville at 6.30 as the 4-0 Scott Skalks take on the Chapmanville Regional Tigers. For Chris Barrett, I'm Joe Linville. Good night, everyone.